science and the little observed and recognized science of metaphysics, uh, I can decipher what they have gathered together by their observations. And then based on my expertise of studying the unseen realm and all the laws that govern the unseen realm, I can speak to you about how I have, through what I know, interpreted the data. Well, first and foremost, the science of genetics is another form of fragmentation of the study of the whole biospiritual body that we call the human being. More and more, as we advance in the study of man, humanity, uh, we begin to fraction and fragment the physical temple into ever more microscopic venues. And we have come now to the phase of knowledge where man is now seen as an atomic structure created or formed into a molecular structure which in turn is formed into a cellular structure and from that cellular structure is come, it comes out into the different forms of intelligence that we see walking the planet from the DNA. <clears throat> All of the different quote-unquote discoveries that we're getting today is based upon the perception that present man has of himself or the present church or religious venue of science. <coughs> science is, is a form of religion. Just like politics is a form of religion. Religion is a form of religious thinking. It is the marginalization of thought or certain abstracts into a formula. And then that formula is meshed over and you take a piece, I'll take a piece, and everybody has a little piece and they'll see what they can extract or mold out of that little piece. Genetics is simply one of the branches of the mold that we're studying. And it's interesting that the more we find out genetically about ourselves, the more we get to that little black box, which no one seems to want to speak about except us, and that is melanin. We speak about DNA because DNA is almost neutral in its context. Everything that has a biological basis has DNA. So does rocks, dirt, everything has some form of DNA structure because it is part and parcel of a living, breathing, sentient, conscious planet. So there is no part of what we live on or what we participate in that is not conscious. Not only of itself, but as itself. So, when Brother brought this particular information to us. What happened is that every time there is a new breakthrough in science, and I know that there are other metaphysicians and other spiritual people who know what I'm speaking about, that every time someone comes to us with something new that science has discovered, the occultist, the metaphysician, the one who studies the spirit, already knows what that formula is. We just have not yet interpreted the language that they've used to describe what they've discovered. But once we get a chance to look at it for a while, we know based upon the science of metaphysics and the study of the occult realms that our ancestors have studied, we know what they are touching upon and what they are looking through. So he may hide behind his codes, which probably if you punch in the letters DNA, you probably get right to them. Uh, you have to see that his constant fractionalizing of life is based upon the way that he sees through the prism of his reality. He cannot see or abstractly understand and understand whole beings and whole things. The Caucasoid has a frame of reference that cannot see the wholeness of a thing. Mm -hmm. He may be able to describe the surface of it 
but to be, his, his ability to interface with that thing that he is observing, he does not have the mechanism, the crystalline mechanism necessary for him to access that. Or oh, there are many who have crossed that line by studying ardently and religiously, quote unquote, and fervently with the dark skinned masters, but they still do not engender the immediacy of the spirit. They have to describe it in abstract forms through their formulas and what they believe they see as we consciously move through ever evolving stages in the spirit. So every time the spirit becomes more and more evident within each of us, he discovers a little something different or more about himself. But you see, we've already put that into capsulized form as peoples of color around the world through the way we dance, through the way we sing, through the instruments that we create in order to interface with that sound light frequency and vibration that we call the Spirit of God. And I'm doing all of this before we condense into the particulars because once we do the particulars, we're getting into the white frame of reference. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do now is to set the groundwork for how we must see and interface with the information. We as metaphysicians and occultists know that every time science discovers something, we know that it's them catching up to the metaphysician catching up to the spiritualist, mm -hmm. catching up to the occultist. There is nothing that he will ever discover that is not already known by the very few peoples who still retain the ancient wisdom knowledge, the ancient wisdom sciences, mm -hmm. the mystery science that they talked about in ancient Kemet, the shamanic sciences that they talk about amongst the indigenous people. We already know this. But it is necessary because our children are caught up in this paradigm where everything needs to be fractionalized, torn apart, uh, eviscerated, uh, uh, thrown up into pieces, ripped apart, so that you can see how the little pieces work. That's fine. We'll do that. But we must never lose sight of the fact that with every discovery in his own fragmented way of thinking, we must take that discovery and put it back into the piece so that we see how the whole operates. In that way, we won't end up making machines that tear down whole forests, that rip up the skies and the water. Mm -hmm. Because he is so estranged from the living beingness of this planet, he can, without any conscience, without any uh, 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 responsibility, do what he's doing to the planet. Because this is the way he sees science, he sees what life is. It's just things for him to rip up and study. Consequences be damned. They'll come later. So I, I, must, I must place into the records that his ever deeper incursion into the study of DNA is his ever deeper incursion into the study of dark matter consciousness, which is the study of melanin. Because melanin is the intelligence that makes the spirit real to us. It is the aspect of spirit that weaves the intent and the will of the creator into something that we can perceive, something that we interface with through time and space, something that we could say this is this and that is that. It gives us depth, it gives us perception. Melanin differentiates the one spirit into the many things that we witness as reality. So the study of DNA and the study of genius is the study of melanin, of which the peoples, the first peoples of the planet, have the abundance of. You see, when they mine us, when they stole us, when they captured us, when they came over and they tore up our ancestry and destroyed us, they knew they were doing the same thing that their scientists were doing, ripping up the melanin, tearing it apart, taking away its homogeneity, its oneness and its, its unified form of the world and fragmenting it into all these different tribal mentalities that separate us one from the other, have us fighting one another, just like he's been doing. 
So he's ripped up not only us from the earth and from our places where we were indigenous to, he's ripped up our consciousness. He's torn melanin into shreds. He has miscegenated us so that we no longer can tap into the deeper dark matter consciousness that is our legacy within the central part of our brains. So when you have that richer part of ourselves being torn apart, he attacks melanin through the food he puts into our communities. He attacks our DNA genius and what is to come, how we may lead the planet back into its righteous trajectory towards the, the consciousness, the creative consciousness. He tears that up with the food that we eat, the juices, the kinds of things he puts into our community. The air we breathe with the chemtrails that you see on a clear day where clouds that don't look like clouds are up above with planes spewing poisons like barium and aluminum and genetic material that are supposed to be entrained within your lung tissue to change and mutate you. He is destroying the ability of your melanin to interface with the dark matter consciousness called Eta Carina that is heading in this direction as we speak today. The black god or the dark god that was talked about in Amos, in your Bible. Because they said God is not the light, God is the darkness. They said the darkness was ex existence and from the darkness came the light. Well the darkness is returning and it's making all the scientists afraid because it's about to give forth with a burst of light. Phosphine genius is about to burst forward. And they say that once it happens, the skies of our solar system, our galaxy, will not see any blackness for a period of seven days. Now, these are written in the holy books, but these books were not holy books for us to bow down and worship to. These books were there for us to study as books of science set down by our ancestors, who spoke about melanin in the Bible, or what became the Bible that we read today, what became the Qur'an we read today, the Sefer Yetzara, the Kabbalah, all of these different books that we read today have to do with the return of the darkness, mm -hmm. which is the eternal womb, the triple black mother. And right now it's returning. But you see, our, our melanin, the genius, the DNA that we're about to speak about is fragmented. So I'm going to try and I'm going to attempt to put, to put together certain things, and which is what I've done, I've, when you asked me what it is uh, that you wanted to speak about, about the, uh, the, the, the six strand six DNA, DNA series. the series, the six, six strand DNA, the six day, I'm going to explain what that means, and the nine strand DNA series, mm -hmm. that has metaphysical um, uh, ramifications way beyond what their science is revealing to them or what their own contained mentality will allow them to understand. Mm -hmm. And this is where the metaphysician has to step in and this is why Dr. Oyibo is not only so essential to the next phase of consciousness on this planet but why he is feared by the present structure this present church of Western scientific uh, um, thought. So, in in listening to what it is that you wanted to speak about and hear is global distribution of the DNA series. This is nothing new. Mm -hmm. This was already known by most of the scientists because there are books written by the early. Uh, medical scientists who went to study African peoples, who went to study indigenous peoples to the, the land south of the, of the equator where the people are darker and more richly melanated. And they wrote a series of medical books attesting to the difference between melanated peoples and white peoples to the point where their apothecaries and their pharmacies created drugs differently because they had a specifically uh, 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 specialized effect on melanated peoples as opposed to white peoples. For instance, mm -hmm. white peoples have more metal in their medicines than black people can tolerate. Mm -hmm. 
So they made most of their medicines so that they could not interface. They had to put more metal into them because the Caucasoid is so deficient of iron. Whereas peoples of color have a rich uplaying of dark iron. That's why you get your dark, black, rich, melanated color is because of the fact that your face and your body has laid up iron in it. But to see the problem is you are like an earth without the plants and the soil and the flowers that grow from it. In other words, back in the days when you, you had a dark, rich, black earth color, you gave off a greenish, bluish hue like you can go today to Senegal and watch those brothers and sisters stand in that sun and they are so black they shine blue. Mm, that's true. But people don't know what the secret to that kind of melanin means. And it means that there are times when our people moving through consciousness as the true earth creatures, that at times when we were in the sun or when we would think a certain emotional thought, one of the chakras would tell us immediately where your thoughts were focused and you would vibrate that particular color in accordance with your emotions. Mm. That's because you were in tuned and your melanin was not disjointed and fragmented. It was connected directly to the interlacing conduits that connected directly to your nervous system. And that nervous system through its own conduits connected directly to the etheric body that you had, which is called the breath form, which you commonly call the soul. So your soul, through the nerve estuaries and the electromagnetic wiring in your body, connected you directly to your skin. Mm. And the soul had its outward representation in the way that the molecules and the atoms formed you to imitate the triple blackness. Because from the blackness came the light, but in order for the light to know itself, it had to be housed back in the blackness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so what happens now, we don't understand what color is, we don't understand the science of melanin, what I call dark matter consciousness, mm -hmm. and in thus doing it, we do things unconsciously in the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why religion is such a, how do I say this, such a deep, intoxicating and addicting substance to dark folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the number one place where they can defer and deter the consciousness of black people by setting up a structure to intercept the true spirit. And the one structure that intercepts the true spirit is religion. Mm -hmm. The dogma of religion are to take us away from actually interfacing with the true voice of God that will tell you the name of the Creator because your DNA is linked to your melanin and your melanin to the pigments on your skin and that's how you had all these different names for God not Jesus you didn't have these names like uh, Allah you didn't have all these names these names came and were fostered upon you because you had names like Mm -hmm. That was the sound of the cosmic resonance of the drums mm -hmm. and the way Most High spoke to you. So you spoke back the name that was given to you directly. You didn't need a second hand interpreter to give you a name for God. God already gave you its name wherever you were on the planet because the name that you called God where you were on this planet was the harmonic frequency necessary to keep the balance of the overall planet in place. Mm -hmm. So when this Caucasoid came around and began ripping up all of your religious sounds and your music and the way you spoke directly to the Creator, it ripped up and tore apart the planet so much now that it begins to wobble. The planet itself today wobbles. Because every one of us is calling out somebody named Jesus mm -hmm. who never existed. Never existed. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So you know that your 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 melanin can be used to keep you in the prison. Mm -hmm.
because it's easily infected with illusion. And that's why we must know ourselves from inside out. And if this is a chance for me to speak more deeply upon what it is we need to do, you know I'm going to actually do my best to be here to speak on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, thanks. Now, I need to read into the record for everyone some things that I put down very quickly for us to understand or understand around what this DNA situation is and what this whole concentration on genetics and you know what's going on with the genetics of disease and we found a gene for cancer and the gene for leukemia and the gene for that you can go down to Woolworths and find genes <laughs> there's genes in everything biological but he needs to do that he needs to think that he is in control because he is going to poison you with what he finds. He can't do anything good with what he finds. Mm -hmm. He needs to keep poisoning you because by your suffering and pathology he lives. Uh -huh. mm. That's know that the medical system does not exist by your health. It exists based on you yes. being maintained within a pool of pathology. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So his control, his science is to find out what may harm you so that he may stay in control. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There is no different, there is no upliftment in his science because he has completely extricated the principle of the deity of God within all of his science. You cannot find deity in any of his sciences. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has to be satanic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the study of genetics, the study of medicine, uh, the study of all of the biologies that he has is a satanic study because he does not believe that a divine intelligence operates all things. Now, if, if I may ask you a question, if you would prefer just to go completely and I interject questions on the end, I'll try to do that. Good, but let me put this down because then the questions may have been answered by what I have put down here for you. So let me just get some rudimentary things down. Simply put, mm -hmm. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid makes RNA, ribonucleic acids, which in turn, ribonucleic acids makes proteins. Everybody knows what a protein kind of is. Proteins allow things that are called amino acids to be registered messengers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about when it comes down to say, for instance, to the DNA helix. And we'll deal with the DNA helix like this because this is the simplest waveform that we can see this is not let me just face this DNA is not what you think it is this is simply an abstract model by what science has done to simplify what it is mm -hmm. okay that's all it is so when they show you this fancy model with all these little things all over it that's a clinical model because they don't all look like this DNA is simply a wave energy pattern crystallized into a gelatinous mold okay and the reason why it seems like this is because we stuck and I'm gonna get into that so DNA makes RNA RNA makes pro proteins and proteins allow the amino acids to be the registered messengers each amino acid is different and thus has a different geometric shape specific to its duty. So amino acids are little messengers that attach themselves along the DNA. And I'm doing it extremely simplistic because if you get in contact with this guy, he will start getting into the church of his own scientific churches. Huge uh, amount of gobbledygook that simply doesn't do anything because it's their own language. It's their own way of estranging you from what's going on inside of you. So, each amino is a microprocessor, a microprocessor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of light signature frequencies. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, when you eat, or when you breathe in, or when you drink water, or when you take in anything that's real food, the breaking down of substances, especially the stuff that you breathe, essentially comes from what your environment 
gives to you in the form of a breath. So as you breathe in or as you eat in, certain things become digested, not only in the lungs but in the stomach and everywhere around you. Even knowledge and the sitting and learning is a form of digestion, which creates a certain type of etheric amino acid mm -hmm. that is not yet detected by them. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, so I already dropped you forward maybe 10 years to what they're going to discover somewhere down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you breathe in, your alveoli in your lungs acts as condensers and compressors of, of cosmic solar material that is in the air that you breathe. Now a lot of people say, well, it's in the air. How can I, I'm going to see it. Well, you can tell that air is a form of atmosphere or almost like a water kind of atmosphere, if you will put your hand outside a car, for instance, and you feel that resistance as you're moving through it, and you can do this, you feel it. This is something actually feeling against my hand. Well, you're like a fish in a bowl, but you are in a more refined atmosphere. You see? So in this atmosphere is a whole other universe. You're living in a, in a, in a terrarium, an open terrarium or open aquarium. Mm -hmm with a kind of water that's so refined that this is the way that you breathe. Like the fish breathes the deeper and more condensed form of this same thing. You see. Mm -hmm. So when you breathe, you breathe in what are called etheric materials, solar materials that condense to become your etheric amino acids. But the food you eat is a denser form of the same thing. So as you break down food, you break down food that essentially has signatures within them. The enzymes, the, the proteins, and the fats, and all the different types of glycerides, whatever it is that you have inside of that food, begins to break down to make certain proteins and sugars that begin to attach themselves along the DNA. Now this DNA has these little signatures here because through your body every day, through your body, there are waveform, light waveforms that are constantly bombarding through your body, more refined, giving you information. And that information that's coming from the outside in the form of light and in the form of your emotions and the form of your thought processes and the form of the electrical magnetic energies in your nerves are passing through the DNA as well. Okay? Now, each amino is a microprocessor of light signature frequencies. It's an antenna for the reception of light codes. Now let me be very clear about that. Light codes are essentially coming from the sun, but it's also coming from all of what you call stars. Uh, coming from constellations, the twelve of course you know being the zodiac. Each zodiac has a specific space wherein this world spins. There are twelve of them around us and we're inside of that and everywhere we go, they are positioned in different areas as we travel around this and the sun itself. So we're inside this light fixture. Just like this light is beaming on me, that would be Aquarius. One behind me would be uh, uh, Leo or all of these. So we're inside of these 12 light fixtures. And behind them, there are 12 or uh, 200 more. So we're getting all these refined form of lights. These coming together and interfacing with one another constitute the light codes that hit us finally. Okay? And as the light is hitting us, we're breathing in the residuals of those light particles that are given off. And we're getting information messages. So, these proteins and these amino acids are micro chakras. And I'll explain all of that. All connected to the seven primary chakras. Each microprocessor amino has a code combination. Each has a three-letter code. So you can imagine now that the microprocessor aminos has a three-letter code. And we're going to get into the showing you how... Oh, you can just cut this part right off. A three-letter code. These are chemical codes used to articulate different combinations of carbon, melanin, hydrogen, melanin, oxygen, melanin, and nitrogen, melanin. 
the, that they collectively go into the constitution of aminos created to receive specific light code instructions. There are 20 known light code antenna processors presently identified by Western medical science. 20 known antenna that define the biocosmic temple we call the human body. The human genetic code is comprised of 64 possible code variations, what they call codons. Now, if you know anything about the ancient I Ching, what they call the ancient Chinese way of dealing with reading, I, and then it's called I, and then C-H-I-N-G, there are 64 different combinations that you could throw of the coins that they give to you. Mm -hmm. And those 64 combinations of three are directly linked to how the code. So if you know how to do I Ching, mm -hmm. you can judge what is going on in the human condition based upon your sympathy with the energies of the planet. Mm -hmm. You can throw those I Ching coins, four I Ching coins or the three I Ching coins, depending on what system you use. Mm -hmm. You can throw those I Ching coins and read what's happening to you an interface because all 64 possibilities have a code next to them that our ancient ancestors wrote down. Okay? And they're linked to the so-called DNA. Now, the human genetic code is comprised of 64 possible code variations. It is these 64 variations that represent the limit or the wall of our perception for Western science. And this is this 64 code variations that I explained is to the Western science a complete mystery. There is nothing beyond it because the present perception of humanity and science cannot go beyond the 64 coded wall. It's like 64 bricks to this particular wall that they cannot see beyond. The mystery is that there are 64 possibilities, but only 20 light code antenna keys turned on and are in working order. So, <clears throat> if we know that there are only 20 possible variations within the chemical codes for aminos, and there are 64 possible code variations, it means that 44 code variations that would then link us up to a higher reality within ourselves are missing. Mm -hmm. Now, here's this man coming along to say that in the southern regions of Africa, below the equator, right now, at this point, there are evidences of people that are supposed to be primitive, primitive meaning first, but to them, primitive meaning idiotic and, and savage, but not understanding that these people hold on to the primary code keys that humanity had when they first fell out of spirit. If they found nine, understand that there are three that's only missing from them and six missing from them because the, the first stages of being able to climb out of the present perceptual paradigm is to link up to the 12 DNA series. Hmm. He only got to nine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to explain what that means. So here we have a, prob a problem with the amino sequence. Let's just use one amino acid, the amino acid leucine. L-E-U-C-I-N-E. -E. Now the amino acid leucine reveals something very deeply in us. I mean, it shows something that they have found out in us. And it shows something that we as metaphysicians have been trying to tell people for a long time, the occultists, the shamans, we tell people, we are locked down. We can't see beyond the present perception because we have refused to release it. Mm. And religion is that lock because it does not explain the spirit. It tells you to believe, but when you believe, it means that you have surrendered your critical thinking and your reasoning mind to accept something based upon what somebody else has said, not first-hand experience. Here's the problem. This society, Western society, 
is not based in first-hand experiences. Mm -hmm. Western society is based on vicarious experiences, which means we go to movies, TVs, we go to different uh, shows to see other people enjoy first-hand experiences with us. That's true. Mm -hmm. So a second-hand experience does not allow for certain parts of our bodies to develop. Mm. It does not allow for certain consciousness, uh, 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 cellular consciousness to be awakened. Because when you take away first-hand experience, you take away the soul's ability to interface with the moment on an organic level and thus traps the spirit or the soul in a paradigm always looking for itself, which is a first-hand experience with itself. Mm -hmm. So now you have a creature who is living completely by vicarious experiences. Okay, go to church, come to the preacher, the preacher will strike up the band, the band's music tells you sing these songs, these songs trigger a vicarious experience in you, you now, based on the programming, are told that Jesus is doing that to you, but you're doing it to yourself. Correct. And you've accepted the programming that somebody is doing this for you. I'm feeling Jesus because why? The preacher says that that feeling that you're feeling while you're in this place is Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand that he is using your own spirituality, your own uh, 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 your own inheritance of the spirit That's correct. and spending your inheritance mm -hmm. by keeping you high on ignorance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So understand now that what I'm trying to say is that at this present time the present amino acid structure that science is studying mm -hmm. is simply based upon a vehicle that is stuck in its own ignorance. Mm -hmm. As soon as you awaken this vehicle, this entity creature, all of these codes will change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the twinkling of an eye, didn't the Bible say? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that if you keep the eyes blind mm -hmm. and the twinkle out of them. That's right. Yes. See? And the knowledge of oneself puts the twinkle back into one's eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But understand this. Now the amino leucine looks like this. U, U, A. These are the these are the way that they are set up in sequence. UUA, UUG, and these are the way the proteins are set up. The protein aminos are set up. CUU, CUC, CUA, and CUG. Now, if you're looking at it, we have six completely different chemical combinations, but they all still add up. These six different completely chemical combinations. These are six completely different chemical combinations for amino acids, but they all add up to leucine. Which means, and this is happening throughout the whole DNA helix, which means that humanity is stuck or locked down in a consciousness of redundancy. The consciousness redundancy that we are presently locked down in means that we can't see to the next phase of our development in the journey of life. Mm -hmm. And what has happened for the last 2,000 years is that a force has been placed upon us, has been imposed upon us. We have been forced into this reality to believe something that you don't understand. And you know what Stevie said. If you believe in things you don't understand, you suffer. Mm -hmm. Superstition ain't the way. And what is religion? But superstition. Overstand mm -hmm. and understand that our redundancy, the reason why we are continuing to be at this pace, constantly suffering as peoples of color, is because we have played into the illusion of ourselves. We have adopted an alien perception of reality. We act to give life to this corpse, this Frankenstein that was created on the slab. You know what happened, what happened when Frankenstein was awoken. We, our electricity, our life force gives life to this Frankenstein monster. And what happened when it got up? It started tearing up the village. Mm -hmm. 
So it's our focus of attention to the church, to the politics, to the education system. Those are all the limbs of the Frankenstein monster. Mm -hmm. The more we give our children over to that, the more energy we give to the Frankenstein monster. And then we turn around and wonder what's happening to our village. Mm -hmm. Because the children you send into that beast, into that laboratory they call the classroom, comes back as the Frankenstein monster. That's not your child anymore. It's being genetically changed, altered in consciousness. Mm -hmm. So the monster lives. And the redundancy continues. And you get another uh, uh, a newspaper where another brother is shot. Another sister is raped. Another child is abandoned. How much longer is this thing going to go on? As long as we continue to think in redundancy, this will see, this has continued to happen. And we have now become addicted to our own comfort. Miserable as we are, we're still addicted to this semi-comfort that we call reality. Mm -hmm. If you want to truly change, you have to suffer. Period. If you pull away your electricity and say, I'm not using electricity anymore. If you say, I'm not going down to the Piggly Wiggly, or I'm not going down to the ANS, I'm not going down to any of these things that feed this Frankenstein. You watch this thing come crumbling down like a house of cards. But you got to remember that your Negro preacher, your Negro politician, your Negro educator is there constantly wanting to, to, uh, to, to go and, and, and pay homage to the monster because that's who he's plugged into. I didn't care that Sharpton was speaking at some Democratic National Convention. That ain't going to change Harlem. No. Harlem is dying. Yes. Rango gave that away. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. That's your other Negro politician. Yes. They're there to serve the illusion, to serve Dr. Frankenstein. And it's your DNA that's being perverted every day by the way that they're putting their food there converting the foods and perverting the foods and you go in there and eating anything and everything that comes into your community. Correct. And eating is a form of communication. Mm -hmm. Know that. I spoke about that in my um, nanogenetic mind control. That when you change the genetics of the food, you teach to the genetics of the human being. Because when the human being consumes that food, it begins to pervert the genetics. So you can genetically mind control somebody without lifting a finger by simply getting them to eat the food that you're perverting. Mm -hmm. And your body no longer is going to be the same. The, the legacy that you have from your genetics, your sperm and your egg, will no longer be the same genetics passed on to that child. And that's why you have so many faggots and homosexuals and lesbians running around today. Mm -hmm. I know you're mad at me for what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but somebody's got to say it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of every civilization, there's one thing common to all of them. Greece, Sumer, Kemet, all of them, all of them fell just when homosexuality began to rise. Mm -hmm. Go back to all of your histories and see if I'm lying. Mm -hmm. And that's based on perverted genetics. Mm -hmm. So understand and understand that what we're doing right here is not just floating off the top and putting up theories or what do you call it. This is a science that they will never teach in school. They'll never teach the, the, young, the young genetic uh, student why is there such a redundancy just to one amino acid. Because the redundancy is the effort of the body to find an escape route out of the present condition that it's in. Mm -hmm. Maybe this combination might do it. No, you did something here to, 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 to stop this from uh, converting out of or evolving out of. So then it created this one. And then this one. All of it indications of the body trying to find a way out of it because as a byproduct of life, it is in motion constantly. Mm -hmm. You stop it with emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one thing about science that they teach you is that science and life and all that lives, all that is science, is about movement and motion. And when you stop motion, you stop life. The motion is also seen in your thinking process. Mm -hmm. Thought creates motion. Because every time you think, you create an atom. Every time you think, you create an atom. Mm. See, they don't give you that in school. Because they... As a child of the Creator, it means that you are a Creator. Mm -hmm. And as a Creator, 
the first thing created, as you will see by that genius, Dr. Oyibo, was the atum, mm -hmm. the one thing, the one thing represented as the all. Mm -hmm. So if you are the one thing in the many, then the one thing is within you, and every time you express, you will always express the one thing. Uh -huh. The illusion is that it's many, but it's not. It's the one thing that begins mm -hmm. to take on the personality of the many. Mm -hmm. You see, so this is just by studying it redundancy if you do not know why there are so many different variations just to make up one amino acid. Mm. It is said that the light code frequencies of the star cluster constellation, now listen carefully, here's a little something for them to go run and tell. In the book called the Enoch, the book of Enoch, which was written by this white man named J.J. Hertog, with uh, with um, financing from the Rockefeller Foundation. This book I read about 10, 15 years ago, powerful book, but none of my brothers or sisters could understand it. I didn't even understand it, but I kept reading it. And there were some things in there that I know they know what's going on. They studied our information. He says he got it from Enoch, which gave him, you know, white folks got this thing where they want to pretend that they didn't get it from us so they got it from some spirit that gave it to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's that new age bullshit. <laughs> they like to tell you somebody else told them. Yeah. Well, well, who was it? Oh, it was a spirit that talked to me at night and Enoch said. Well, hell, Enoch was black. <laughs> so you can't get away from that. So in it, trying to remember what he was saying, I put this down. I says, the light code frequency of a star cluster known as Alpha Draconis represents the star grid system program that is entropic in nature. Entropic means that it sucks energy, that it leaves a void of energy, that causes certain energies to want to come to it. But it's, it's entropic, it sucks the life force out of you. Like, you know, sometimes you get close to certain Caucasians, if you're around too much, you wonder why you're feeling tired. Or when you're around certain people, not just mm -hmm. Caucasians, because there's a bunch of Negroes out there that be sucking your life force too. Mm -hmm. But there, there's, there, there, there is a vampiric energy that creates an entropic feeling in you because you're feeding something that they lack. See what I'm saying? So there is right now a huge entropic energy called Alpha Draconis. And now the ancestors spoke deeply about this because they spoke about being devoured by the dragon. Mm -hmm. Alpha Draconis. Okay? But that Alpha Draconis essentially is a star constellation that sucks consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how it feeds. Now as a result, it is said to devour all consciousness potential and keep planispheres like Earth chained or locked into the entropy of singular sun systems. In other words, we had, at another time, back 30 years ago, you know, you were there taping the people told me it was crazy. There were at least two suns in our star system. One that was magnetic, one that was electric. Problem is, the other one got knocked out of our field of, of, of vision, and it turns when we turn. Mm. So we don't see it. Mm -hmm. And that's why they've been sending all these things to the sun. And sometimes we're not seeing our sun. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So at this point right now, we're looking at the sun, and where we are in conjunction with the sun, if it's a singular sun, it causes problems for us. This is an electrical sun, and it causes some deep problems for us. So now, the singular sun system causes consciousness to be, uh, em uh, how do you say, depreciated. This causes the collective consciousness signal bands of our species consciousness because as a collective species, as we think and as we are emoting, we create an energy field that is not only of our own singular one that is like our aura, but it collectively coats the earth. Mm. So all of the billions and billions of people thinking and feeling sets up an energy grid around the planet. That's correct. Okay? Now that energy grid around the planet is being devoured when we get into certain 
uh, 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 like certain times of the year, or certain areas where you begin to start seeing the effects of that with people at war, people killing one another, people getting angry, getting shot, things like that. It's when your higher consciousness just turns down to the lower and the, and the dragon begins to devour all of your higher energy consciousness. As humans, we are trapped as a result in the seven harmonic field of star evolution, the seventh harmonic field of star evolution. The Dravidians call this particular star harmonic evolution Darvana, D A R V N A, or D A R V N A, Darvna Ratri. Darvna Ratri. This particular entropic energy is the, what is called, Davna Atri is called the night of frustration. This is when the earth goes into a specific star cluster and everything on the planet begins to become depressed. Mm. Whole species like animals, you see elephants, why are elephants going into tar pits and just dying now? Why are species dying out at six and seven and ten times? Why are whales washing up on shore? They are feeling the frustration of the planet. And this Caucasoid is part of that energy frustration that we are exhibiting, that we are being filled, we are being participated in. We are participating, but we are being participated against our will. We just happen to come back at a time when everything is being flushed down the toilet. But there are some amongst us who are here who are actually seeing the days and the times, tabulating it, and are growing our soul as a result. There is no superfluous time spent if you spend it in learning, if you spend it in researching yourself, seeing who you are and could be with the next person. Mm -hmm. Because your soul is growing in light. You are energizing that field that you represent individually. So if the world were to blow up tomorrow, physically, your psycho-spiritual self, the soul energy, would have retained the experience, though you may not have retained the language. And that experience will find the language that allows it to express itself in another life. Mm -hmm. So it never is lost. Mm -hmm. So when people come to you and say, live fast, die young, make a pretty corpse, that don't make no sense. That's a fool, you see. So every day that you have the chance, study and study thyself. Every morning you wake up, look in the mirror, and what do you see to you? Because the one looking in the mirror is the student. The teacher is the reflection. And that's the secret behind how the Creator created. You see, the creator is the student. Mm -hmm. And you, by your actions and the things that you do every day, what you perceive and receive by experience, the creator receives in turn. Mm -hmm. So you have a job to do. Mm -hmm. You are the teacher of the creator. And some people say, well, how can you blaspheme? We are here to serve the creator. No. The creator serves us so that we may be better and better so that it may be served in return. It can't know a damn thing if it's pushing you down or telling you you're damned forever in hell. Oh shit, I might as well just go ahead. You allow me to do this, if I can do everything that I want to do, why not do everything I want to do? Now you're going to damn me for it? That's the myopic thinking of a, of a, of a prisoner, prison planet mentality. Mm -hmm. And that's why our DNA is so frustrated at this time. Now this night of frustration is the present harmonic field that traps the planetary intelligence of man so that he cannot get behind or beyond the present sevenfold nature of cycles and changes on this planet. Mm -hmm. Man is chained through his inactive DNA to Earth's geometric cycles. Let me say that again. Man is chained to his DNA through the inactive cycles. Let me ask right to his inactive DNA. In other words, mm -hmm. the DNA that is not alive out of the six to the nine, that DNA represents what keeps him entropically chained to the physical planet and to this reality. 
That's why they call it gravity. Why do they call it gravity? Because it's essentially a grave. That's what it does. It pulls you in. Life is entropic in its nature. But the spark of the creator is what moves it forward. So man is chained through his inactive DNA to Earth's geometric and magnetic cycles. There are seven days for quote-unquote creation. Seven years to the age of reason. Seven chakras. Seven year cycles for age progression of the cell. Seven seconds, seven milliseconds, seven nanoseconds before the phosphine explosions occur toward the inner dimensions of the mind. In other words, at that point where you begin to know yourself as you raise the seventh chakra, it, to, it goes into seconds, then nanoseconds, as you plunge deeper into the well that you represent, that consciousness that you call the Creator. This night of frustration is a point in human consciousness evolution where the physical ordering of the mind must come to the realization that even star evolution does not share any singular space and time indefinitely. In other words, what we're looking at as the stars above us at this time, what we're seeing presently is not and will not remain like that forever. Even the stars are developing and evolving because they are conscious as themselves. You see, the earth is conscious as itself. It knows itself as water. It knows itself as earth. It knows itself as fire. It knows itself as atmosphere. But you see, it does not become conscious of itself until man walks upon it. You see what I'm saying? You can't... Man, and don't, 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 don't get me wrong, sisters, but man. Man is mother, father, son. Mother, father, son. In the ancient Hebrew, which is Eu, Hebrew came from this word, Eu, which is the name of an African god. And the name of the people were the Eus. So the Hebrew himself, Hebrews, I don't call it the Hebrew language or you know, the, the fire letters that they have. That's not the Hebrew language. That Hebrew language or the fire letters come from the hieroglyphics of light. See? This is where it came from. So light creates fire. Fire is a condensed value of light. It is a conditioned value of light. All right? And fire being a conditioned value of light would have to extrapolate from light. So the first languaging system were hieroglyphic pictographs that were beamed in in the form of light codes that we then translated into what you see as the hieroglyphics or what I call the medunetcha. So the Medunetcha were the first, which means that's the light language. But I call the Hebrew language the Ku Medu, which is the fire language. Because all of the Hebrew languages are actually the representation of flames in their different, if you look at them, they're the representation of fire, all of them. It's all about the way fire dances. So the flame language, Kumadu, is what we are studying now in this particular part of what we're dealing with as a reality. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if I was going to show you something. Again, I, get, get, I always get caught up because there's so much to teach and to say before we can get to the questions. I want to make sure I get all of this down so that we have something to work with. Well, let me just put this down. The, 12, the human body has 12 meridians. We'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. The earth has 12 meridians. All are connected to the 12 meridians, light beams, of the star constellations. The 12 star constellations called the zodiac. All of the 12 star constellations, all of the 12 meridians of the earth and the 12 meridians of humanity are interconnected to form new thresholds of awareness. That means how they interplay one with the other can provide the doorway for humanity to come out of the present perception and into another reality. Their interplay can be seen in the form of helical energy patterns that match the patterns of our DNA. In other words, the way that the meridians of the earth 
the meridians of our patterns of our bodies and the meridian patterns and the thresholds of the constellations all come together to create helical energies that match exactly the helical patterns that are seen within your DNA, actually, the DNA. The human vehicle has 12 awareness meridians of light, all connected to the archetypal seed cell. Now this is the, this is the secret. And this is what they'll never teach you. The human vehicle has 12 awareness meridians. That's what the acupuncturist is moving when they stick the needles into you to move the energies around. These 12 meridians, awareness meridians of light, are connected to the archetypal seed cell located in the pineal or the first light, first eye. Not the third eye, but the first eye. Mm -hmm. They want you to believe it's the third eye because they got you believing that these two are the real eyes. Um. These two eyes are the eyes simply to diffract light wave patterns into forms of solidity mm -hmm. so that you can perceive a reality. But the first eye sees beyond that to the true nature of all physical things. So it would have to be the first eye because that's where you came from. So the primary one eye which sits on top of your dollar bill pyramid showing you what it is that they're telling you what the real deal is, that first eye, the one that they tried to atrophy with the new hamburgers that they're coming out with, with the new drinks that they're coming out with, with all the different things and the drugs they put into your medicines, all of this is to shut down the activity of that first eye mm -hmm. and to impede the flow of all 12 of your meridians so that you don't open up that first eye. So now, this particular first eye Inside what they call, what I call the seed cell within that first eye, that seed crystalline cell is made up of a crystalline lattice. In other words, if you look at a crystal, you see it has a lattice. And that lattice is usually in six forms, in six points. All organic crystals, real crystals, have six point lattices. That's because that's the way the light wave meridians of the planet shapes them in order to translate information from the ground to the people above. Now we're mining them out of the ground, which is why people are getting more and more stupid. Mm. They get all this going on it, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to put it back into the earth so that it vibrates properly, so you can, when you're wearing it, you're in face with the earth, you're interface with the earth. But they are mining it out now, and inside of all of these crystals are locked the thought engrams of previous civilizations that lived mm -hmm. upon the land mm -hmm. where it was mined. Mm -hmm. And you could put this into places, you could go into meditation with these and go right into contact with them. Mm -hmm. Because their energy signature still surrounds this planet. And that's what the white boy is trying to tune into. But see, he's over there trying to steal Native American thought and Native American organic interface rituals mm -hmm. and spend $10,000 to get some kind of classification that, oh, now I'm a shaman. No, you're not a shaman. Mm -hmm. You're a little perpetrator. You're a little kindergarten boy dressed up. Mm -hmm. And you will never be able to take the true meanings and qualify them and interface with the relativity that they represent. You may have a quantum bit of it that you're playing around with, like a toy. You may be able to very articulately see what you say and, and write it down for us to interface through words, but you can never do it. Mm -hmm. You can never do it. Or be it. Or be it. So as I go on, very quickly, the Earth's planetary membrane, what is called the ionosphere, troposphere, stratosphere, etc., or the biocomputer, has 12 vibrating light-focused channels. Both channels are used to reprogram the human molecular atomic structure and act as key points for the shift in particle or quantum perception, which is the doorway to the next level of biospiritual evolution. These 12 awareness meridians within the human body temple are synchronized through the 12 planetary meridians with the 12 zodiac portals through the six double helix of 12 strand spiritual ladder or the 12 strand DNA. Now, what does that mean? We're going to get right to it. 
It is three by three by three, which is what they're talking about, the six double helix, three by three by three, and the three, six, nine, three fours of twelve. There are body meridians, there's twelve body meridians, which means twelve equaling three. There are planet, twelve planetary meridians, again twelve equals three, and there are twelve signs of the zodiac, which means twelve equals three, that means three, 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 it means nine, which comes up to the vibratory number of nine, which is why that is the last number that you can that, that can be formed out of the one linear first equation. The circle with the dot. You can only come back to nine. There's nothing else. After nine is ten, and that's just a repeat of one. It's the multiples that create from it. So I'm just kind of throwing this out there very quickly. This uh, white boy, I forgot his name, uh, went and studied the, again, they go into, into the laboratories, and he studied the DNA, which was very interesting what he studied. He studied the DNA and found out that emotion triggered certain DNA on the life code sites. So, let me just put this down one time to show you what he found out, which is very interesting because it just substantiates our ancestors. This is DNA. For instance, okay, we are all, we're all, okay, we're on the same page, we'll say this is DNA. Now, on, let's just, for simplistic sake, let's just put this this way. Okay, let's just do this. On this DNA, we have a series of amino acid proteins. And again, these little amino acid proteins have little different little shapes. You know, one may have bunny ears, another one may have little arms. You know, they have little shapes, little crystalline shapes that are their own. But they are based upon the temperaments that you share right now. Mm. So you create the proteins and the amino acids based upon the mentality that you carry. Yes. So what they do to our children is to create certain conditions whereby in the education system and in the idiot media system and in the entertainment system certain crystalline structures are formed along their DNA patterns by the way the music is played the kind of sounds that come out of their music mm -hmm. that shatters these crystals once those sound waves pass through them okay now we say that we have a kind of light code sequencing site of an emotion. When an emotion happens, depending on the type of emotion you have, it will dictate how many of these aminos are touched. And thus when the wave signature of the DNA of the of the emotion touches certain amino acids along the site of the DNA, it teaches the DNA what that emotion is supposed to do and how that emotion is supposed to translate as the physical body. So, if the emotion, they found out in the laboratory that if the emotion is made up of fear, and look what's happening today, they find out that if the emotion is made up of fear, the wave that is sig the wave signature is very broad and hardly touches any of the crystals of the, the amino acid crystals but if the wave form is energized through an empathetic energy that they call love that the wave form is so dense that it touches them near every one Mm. of the crystals along the DNA strand mm. which then translates to an evolving being mm -hmm. because along this wave band signature which is more densely collected you have more information mm -hmm. thus more information is passed on to the DNA and when the DNA has more information
person is now tapping into the very genius mm. that he is trying to seek. Mm -hmm. Now, what has differentiated these people? Nine times out of ten, these people ain't educated. And the people that they went to find the samples from ain't yet hooked up into Western civilization. Or if they are, they are so tuned still into the, the talking of their own ancestral gods, eating their own ancestral food, mm -hmm. and not under, have not yet undergone the serious stress or have learned to bypass the stress and to take on a whole other way of being to survive. But in them is contained the treasury. This is the Fort Knox of human genetic, the human genome system, mm. according to him. So now he has to find out what is it that these people have that we Caucasoids don't have. There it is. And you will see now that coming out of Europe, there are going to be new potions and pills to turn white people black. It's getting ready to happen. You're going to watch it. They already got them. In fact, there was a movie out called Black Like Me. Mm -hmm. And they had an experimental pill that Richard Whitmark used. Not Richard Whitmark, what was his name? Uh, no, it wasn't Richard Whitmark. Richard Whitmark was that skinny dude. It's the other round white boy who played it. Yeah, with the gray eyes. Uh, William Bendix or something like that. You know who I'm talking about, right? Heavy set dude. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking right. about. Right. I'm just trying to think of it. He thing. took a drug called Sorolin that turned him dark and black. And they're getting ready to put that back on the market for white folks because the sun getting ready to get ugly on white folks. Mm -hmm. And dark folks who eat white people food. Watch. The melanin is going to be disjointed and destructive to you if we don't come back into our collective thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. That's an area that he was saying mm -hmm. is great. Uh, will, even taking that pill, will it affect the uh, chemical combinations, and that's the main thing, which the, 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 the UUA, the UUG, mm -hmm. the CUU, the, all of that, and the last one, the CUG, with that pill that they get, that combination still won't be as bad as I don't think. Well, see, what you, you're hitting it on the point right now. All he can do is drug himself into some kind of similarity. Yes. See, he can't be it. He can only be similar to it. Mm -hmm. He has to flow back into the dark mother consciousness, which is why you see him paired with all these black women on TV. Now, now mm -hmm. that DNA, that, which is the dioxy acid. Yeah, dioxy arrival yes. nucleic acid, yes. yes. Will it <laughs> affect us in some way, or could we tap into this thing more? Well, what they have found is that the bloodstream of the black man and the black woman is, has incredible variations and differences than the white man. First of all, it's thicker. Yes. And it has a lot more... Uh, red corpuscles, yes, red blood, blood cells, which means that we are older by means of us having more generated cycles of incarnation. You see, the more denser your bloodstream and the more denser your red blood cell or your cellular network, the, the older you are in consciousness. Well, you, you just answered something for me. Mm -hmm. I was going to the doctor for... They were giving me hydroxyurea. Mm -hmm. My blood cells are very, very rich. Mm -hmm. Very rich. Mm -hmm. And they give me the hydroxyurea to, to, it. to, to thin it. Yeah, exactly. Bring it down. Right. Now, what is that detrimental? Yes, it is. Oh, it really is. Yeah, because you see, what you've done now is you thin the messengers to your melanin on your skin. Uh huh. And what's happening is you thin the oxygen necessary to keep that melanin alive. And what's happening is the foods that you're eating is causing your melanin, your blood, to become uh, mucosized, which causes a stagnation in it, which then further complicates it for dark folks. And it eats up your copper, which causes problems in your heart. Uh, you see what I'm saying? We have a whole other kind of, 
Now me, I'm mixed. I got uh, the damn Spaniards, you know, and yeah. what do you call them? French. Yes. Went down and messed with my um, yes. Carib Indian ancestry yes. down there. So I got the mixture of them. Yes. And so what happens is you have to be very, very careful. You have to be mindful of the fact that anytime you take white folks drugs, it's going to affect you deleteriously where it will already, it'll probably be alright for them because they need that. Yes. See now I don't mind people who are on the pl uh, black dark folks who are on the path to take the herbs first before they get off of herbs. Uh -huh. Because a herb is another form of drug. And our ancestors, until we learned that our ancestors only used the herb because it was a time of great stress and cataclysm. And we used it as a way to ameliorate pain and suffering. But we never used the herb itself. That's something over the last, say, 15,000, 20,000 years. That's when we started using it because the earth was wobbling all around and the, the temperature was crazy. The, everything was nuts, you see. And so we fell from that pristine time when the earth was spinning at the perfect centrific, centrifugal force that created a certain type of climate that was perfect. We didn't even need clothes. There was no modesty. Mm -hmm. We got modesty because we got crazy. Yeah. We just listened to this white man and said, yeah. you naked. Yeah. What do you mean naked? What's that? I got what I came here with. <laughs> <laughs> you see. But of course, during the time that we had to protect ourselves against a seriously uh, pathological sun, we had to put on, you know, the ancient ancestral gods, or what they call them, the chairs, taught us how to clothe ourselves for protection. That's why you see the ancestral women cover themselves completely because, I say this to you again, women are the most susceptible to climactic changes and trauma changes in the climate. And that if you sisters are dressing all sick and crazy with crotch cutter pants all up into your yoni, Dressing with your body and your shoulders all out. That means you done got yanged out. Uh -huh. That means you got more testosterone in you, which means your genetics are perverted. Uh -huh. See, when the women are dressing to the point where they can have a crotch cut or set of pants that's rubbing up directly against the yoni and separating the yoni and rubbing up against that delicate spot and they don't feel nothing, mm -hmm. they have become yang. Because uh -huh. that's for men. Men are the ones who need pants. Not because we just going to put it on for style. It's because pants afford us the best way to get rid of the extra heat that we make. Mm. Pants causes heat to be deflected from the body. Mm. Whereas the skirt, if used in layers, like your ancestors did, keeps heat trapped within the layers of the skirt. Uh -huh. That's right. Now you can use the pants under the skirt if it's real cold and you're living in them crazy climates, if you got to keep changing, yeah. But your ancestors wrapped herself. <clears throat> she didn't wear bras because at the time the sun wasn't crazy and the atmosphere wasn't crazy. Therefore, the people weren't crazy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the body was not just something to lust after. Uh -huh. That's another form of sickness. Yes, yes, so the sisters have to learn that her body and the way she treats it is the way the legacy that comes from that womb will be. If the woman is, and this is something that I'm definitely getting fighting from the, uh, the brothers and sisters, if the sisters do not understand that their bodies dictate what's going to happen to the next generation, mm -hmm. whether it's going to be insane or not, they will see that if they don't change and teach their daughters and their children, especially the girls, that there are certain things that they cannot do. I don't give a damn what the style is because this European is setting the style trends for yes, our young yes, girls. Yes, Not yes, us. That's and they're dressing our children. Yes. And I know they say I'm crazy, but I, it isn't that I hate women and I, want, I wish y'all stopped that. I don't hate women. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> Why would I want to help sisters by, if I hate them? Mm -hmm. Let me just say this because we can get back to the DNA. But this is very important. Even what the Arabs use is plagiarized and ripped off from the African women mm -hmm. or women of color because the covering of the nose by what they call uh, the exercise of uh, perda 
where the women covered themselves was a way to protect herself in poisonous environments, especially when she walked amongst men. What does that mean? When women walk amongst men, women who are real women, sensitive women, women of childbearing age, there is a specific pheromone given off by men because we're electrically charged. And those pheromones are actually signatures that can be read because scientists have taken infrared and all kinds of different <coughs> light spectrums and have pointed it at animals that are in heat and the pheromones are kicking off in different colors. And if that's the case, then men give off through their, their scent especially. Certain particulate scent mo molecules that are breathed in by the woman. When she breathes that in, if she's a sensitive woman, boom, she starts ovulating. But we think that at the time, of course, we got the crazy Arabs taking it, who want to conquer, and what do you call it, and the women now are being used and abused based upon something that the women did in order to protect themselves when walking amongst men. If they're not amongst their husbands, they cover. Not because they cover for modesty or the man don't want to see her face. That was nonsense. They cover because the men gave off a certain odor, especially when she was pregnant. She would never go walking amongst men or working with men when she was pregnant. Because you breathing in his signatures changes the genetic structure and signature of your baby. That's why you never saw the women. You would come in first and see the warriors. You, hey... You can get past them, then you may come in and see some of the women, if we allow it. But nowadays, it's like, you know, everybody for themselves. And this is why we're in the madness we are today. At the time, our African women, or women of the ancient times, 100 to 150,000 years ago, knew what men were for. Men were to take the stress off of their lives. Mm. Because a stressed woman creates stressed children. Yes, it does. So we created a stressless society for you. That's why when the white man came and saw women doing everything, that's because paternally, Africa was a paternal society, not patriarchal or no. matriarchal. It was a paternal society where we made sure that our women were happy. Hmm. And only when this white man came in and changed everything and then created the science of anthropology to go back and study what he thought he was studying as a primitive peoples. No, there's no primitive peoples untouched by the madness of this Caucasoid. And that every society, every tribe he studies now is a pathological expression of when they met him two or three hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So he ain't going back trying to study somebody, well this is what they do, and they've done this for thousands. No, they didn't. They did that in order to convert or to survive while you were there. The real indigenous peoples that you can see have not been touched by European hands or touched anything. Discovery destroys. It doesn't do anything to enlighten anybody. And all they're doing is going there and changing. When them Christians and them damn Jesuits came in there, there were no tribes that came in there. You can't study no tribe at their indigenous levels anymore. So the women were not beat up. Imagine a man who has got some kind of intelligence to build a pyramid is going to beat his woman for 10,000 years. Does that make any damn sense? Make no sense. No sense. In every African ancient society, the women are revered. Only in this Caucasian society she is not. Because she was at war with her man. She used to raise the son to kill the father. It's all in their, in, all in their stories. But when you see the ancient comedic principles, you always see the male and the female behind him as the, in the support mechanism to him, mm -hmm. never the other way around. Mm -hmm. And that's all for all the sisters who want to think feminist. There is no woman in front of a man. That's madness. You don't let your woman go through the door first. Mm -hmm. That's white folks. Mm -hmm. I keep in my mind trying to see how this relates to what's going on right now in DACA, yeah. where they are vaping mm -hmm. women as uh, some part of war, like a it's, it's, it's Interesting you say that. Yes. Men. Yes. What you do is you rape the women. Yes. But you rape the women and your seed becomes the woman now. You changed her. Once you change that womb, the legacy of that tribe dies. Because the womb, the first elements, the essence of that womb goes into that first child. 
Now the essence is no longer belonging to the males. So you have now taken, you have eviscerated or you have actually castrated the males by raping their women. And guess what? The Arab women would sing while their men did it. Mm. This is what I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. that because of the nature of the African woman, yes. she could not kill and see the woman. No, she couldn't. Even though it reflects Exactly. Her. And that's because you are of the God principle. Mm -hmm. You are directly connected to the creative principle. So you would never do that because that would be the creator. No matter how it came here, it would be the creator. And you would have an explanation for that. But guess what? There are sisters out there now that don't, no, 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 this is not going to happen. And they're killing their children, but they're dying as well. They're taking, they're, 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 uh, they're taking poison, and they're killing themselves rather than give a birth to anybody else. Mm, no-win situation. No situation. And this is the last vestige, because this genocide that's going on right now is getting ready to turn everything around. I, I didn't want to get into this, but... There has been a penalty that had to be paid for the, for the passage of this consciousness through into the next paradigm. And we were the ones who paid it. Because we are the ones to take over to the next paradigm. And it's getting ready to shift. With Dr. Oyibo and with this brother named Philip, I believe, in Ewengali, or Ewagali, this friend, this guy that came from Oyibo's tribe, is shifting the whole consciousness of the planet now. He has no room, there is no room for him where it's going. That's why he has to create his stormtroopers. This is why the Star Wars trilogy was written, to show you where we're going back to. And you're going to see him walk in the streets today. Which is why the same genocide that you're speaking about going on in, in, in the Sudan, in Dafa, is going on right here now. You see it happening. Uh, can you can you re repeat that? One? Okay. Yeah, the same. Uh, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. This is why the same genocide that's going on in Dafa today in in Sudan is reminiscent of what the genocide uh, protocols are set up here for today, and all of the weapons from science is now going to be targeting to people of color. Walk Harlem today, and I guarantee you in 10 years, you won't see any black people there. Mm -hmm. If you do, they're going to be regimented to being consumers or people who do menial jobs. Even the Mexicans are going to become the quote-unquote new niggas up around Harlem. Oh, definitely. And you're going to see it happening. Yeah. Yes, and if you go over to um, Queens, there are no black peoples, only in small little clusters. Where are they all gone? Park. There it is. There's a lot of Mexicans and people that cannot speak English. Everywhere. Most of the, um, Everywhere. Everywhere. And this was a plan by the Bush administration to saturate. Yes, with Mexico. That's why they call him El Zorro. The boy, the president, the fox. Smart. He just, just opened up and just, they opened up the borders because remember, he got the boy, uh, Bush, he's. He's got the Spanish blood in him, Spanish nobility. Yes, Spanish nobility. And they know what they're doing by putting him in because these people do nothing for me. They need new niggas. They don't have to ship them over in boats no more. They just have to open the borders. That's in right. California, That's Texas, right. Florida, or it's Mexico anyway. Hey, coming down from Canada. It's the same way. They're going into Canada. You see, and they are stopping Africans. They have a kind of a quota system for Africans mm -hmm. yes. and for Haitians yes. because they know what they have to do, yes. right? The genetics, it's the genetics and they don't call them black, um, uh, Spanish, they don't call them quote-unquote Indians, they call them Hispanics. Now Hispanic is just another name genetically for white. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The word Hispanic translates to mean white. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you look at the, the sheets Okay, white with Hispanic, black with white. They don't have pure white wasp anymore on those, uh, what do you call the forms? Uh, the census. Census, census forms. Mm -hmm. There's a, six different types of... Uh, In prison they can mm -hmm. um, Latin and Spanish and Hispanic, all that's white. Yes. In order to exactly. The that's right, that the white people are still right. But their DNA now has reached the point where it's no longer able to continue. It's just like being cloned. Uh -huh. If you clone, say, after seven times, 
the strain is too weak for you to continue cloning. Well, remember, the corkazoid was supposed to have maybe a thousand to two thousand year cycle. It's up. Oh, it is up. It's up. And the thing is that he has to escape. In my book, The Wounded Womb, I talked about him finding a way to escape back into the gene pool that can transit from this lockdown paradigm. And the only gene pool that can get out of this paradigm is the black woman's womb. So he is, he is doing everything. You see him on the news constantly next to the white wo black woman and she's just as white as she can be, trying yes, to be white, but she's accepted. But he knows and he is telling you in all the commercials, he is telling you in everything in the movies where you need to put your seed. To reinvent yourself. To, uh, in, yeah, in, in other words, no, now you reinvent yourself to, to, to um, stow away. Okay. Uh -huh. To stow away mm -hmm. into the boat of Ra, which is within the womb of the black woman, the melanated woman. He will stow away so that he will show up somewhere down the line as a consciousness because he can't exist in the cosmic framework anymore. If you read the Nubian, um, the Nubian, um, what is that, the Nubian, what is that called again? There was a, a, a set of tapes that came out called the Nubian Codes or the Nubian something. But yeah, in the Nubian, I, I, I hmm? yeah, I, I, you know what I'm I, saying, yeah. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, in this Nubian pa uh, framework, in these Nubian tapes, they speak about the fact that if you as a species consciousness, as a collective species type, were to participate in genocide, your species strain would disappear within the cosmic uh, continuum. So the Japanese in the next 20 to 50 years will only have about 20 or 30,000 of their own represented. Wow. So they're going to disappear too. But, yes. But in the Eurocentric uh, framework mm -hmm. to mate with the black woman, he must kill off the black man, okay. mate with the black woman, right. kill off the black man. So yes. you need to speak to that too. Well, they, yeah. The, well, he sisters, has to do. the sisters are going along with Yes, you. they are. They, but again, remember, and this is, no, um, this is no aspersion to the feminine principle because we have a very intelligent or a very um, studied uh, female class amongst us. And they take what they have studied in school and factor that into what they believe to be reality. But the female mind is a support mechanism. It is not an initiating mechanism. It is, one that, it is the necessity for the soil. A soil supports the growth. The female is the earth. She is the soil of all creation throughout all existence. Thus, she is a support mechanism to all that is life. You cannot take her and put her into a managerial position to create situations where you solve problems and dynamics that needs mathematical logic and so forth because she doesn't function that way. She wasn't made to be functioning that way. That's the masculine principle. But when you take her and put her into that and force her to study that, and change her nature. That's the secret. Change the female nature from one who supports and use her unconditional love matrix as a way to accept anything. Like homosexuality is mostly reason for that is because women have been given more power. And the reason why homosexuals, can, males especially, can come in so fervently and be so out is because the females have been given the power to say yes or no, or I'll accept it or I won't. But their nature to accept all, like, you know, you got the butt ugly child, well, that's my baby, I love my baby, and, you know, well, that, he's a little deformed, but I'm going to love, that's your own, that's who you are. No matter what kind of seed you put into a soil, if that seed is deficient, that soil will give whatever it is that's in that seed will be allowed to grow. But when the male comes along, he'll chop that shit off and throw it away or burn it. The male has that unfeeling capacity to say no, hell no, no. And that's what the females uh, abdicate to if you have a good man. If the man ain't nuts and crazy and stupid like he is today. What happens is you defer, and this is the secret of the relationship. A woman gives up her power for love, the man gives up his love for power. And when those two dynamics come together, then the helix is complete. But if you don't give a power, sister, nothing gets done because the male's whole nature is to seek power. 
So he's going to be constantly at odds with you. So what happens now, the corcozoid, knowing the psychology and the nature of man and woman, would use the black female, take her out of the home, and make it so that her man can't take care of her. Mm -hmm. Because he's insane. He has been spoiled. He is doing all kind of crazy shit with himself from the time he's young. And he is taught that he is the criminal. He has to do this, blah, blah, blah. Give him, take away his ability to lead. Mm, Put movies out there, especially if you go there today, you look today on your television at your sitcoms. And every man there is some kind of castrated jackass mm -hmm. with the woman ruling the house. Mm -hmm. Nowhere have you seen a black man in leadership. Even Cosby, with his idiotic self, was pussy whipped by his, by his what he called it. You know, you, what, what's she going to say? Oh my God, what's she going to say? A man in your house, you're not supposed to be hiding anything. If you're righteous, you say what goes, and then you go, and the house is supposed to run based upon what it is. The man says, boom, 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 boom. He's supposed to lead. He's supposed to have chances to lead. He fails, and the sister helps him to get better. Mm -hmm. But if she is doing the leading and he's following, she don't respect that. Mm -hmm. No woman respects a man who don't know how to be a man. Because she in herself is taking orders from another man. He just so happens to be white. She don't know that this society is structured by the white man for him to actually have the upper hand over the black man. So every time she interfaces with the society and becomes part of that structure, she now is playing along with him to the detriment of the collective. But that's not, that's, that's just, and to, to see if he can turn the blame on her, I don't want you to use this take to think that it's her. Mm -hmm. no. uh -uh. No. It's us. Mm -hmm. And as brothers, until we are ready to die. See, you're too punkified to die. You don't want to mm -hmm. die anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You don't want to kill anymore. Mm -hmm. it is. You don't want to die to show her what you're capable of doing to protect and provide for her. See, the provider protector instinct is gone from you because you done turned into a faggot. You're too busy wanting to provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to dance and dress and look like a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you are not willing to provide and protect for your own woman, how is she going to respect you? She does not function well in stressful environments. You have to make a stressless environment for her to feel that joy, to feel that love, so then all of a sudden your house becomes a home. Mm -hmm. But that particular equation has been factored out of us. It's been now factored out of our children, our girl children especially, and our male children. They are new two separate schools where the society now functions according to a dynamic of both male and female, where the gender principle has been taken out, where the DNA has been attacked in such a way to take away the gender principle and have this one mono creature walking around opposite to what it is that they represent down here. Mm -hmm. Why, why, you, why you're on that field? Mm -hmm. Speak to the brothers. Pants down below their ass. Mm -hmm. Braids. Earrings. Mm -hmm. I mean, damn. Yeah, don't compete with Well, you got to understand the psychology. You got to understand the young brothers in the psychology. Now, I'm not talking about African brothers uh, who are in their cycles for initiation. Native American brothers have always had their hair because hair contains nutrients. Mm -hmm. And when you hold on to your hair and your nutrients, you don't get heart attacks. Mm. No, I'm, I'm talking you see, about... No, I'm saying braids. Bows and braids. No, 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 no. I'm saying, let me just get that straight. So, because the long hair <laughs> on our young... Rings. Right. The long hair on our young brothers mm -hmm. is a sign of rites of passage. The Maasai's hair... Back into their mind. Back into... Yeah. So, the, the self, that hair is them trying to find their way back to that place where they had that initiation. Now, them wrapping it up and dressing like a female is something different. That's, that's, mm -hmm. another, thing. that's another thing. The piercing, the piercing of the ears and the nose, that's us. You know what? That's the warrior. Now, the piercing of the ears was deep. Why? Because the females did it first. Why? Because during the time when the atmosphere of the planet was in turmoil, the psychic senses were down. If you turn your ears upside down, you have the shape of an embryo. And this is the head. And where they pierce, that's the third or first eye. 
And when they were by themselves and the men were out in the hunt, they either put a silver in or gold. The mm -hmm. silver was to become a lot more calmer, to bring down the energy of the first eye, to chill from seeing all these spirits around you. The gold was to heighten it so that you could sense danger. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The skin being cut was not just scarification for beauty and all this. That's what they, the white people came to talk about. The scarification was science because where the Africans had to run during the times of turmoil and war into places that would not be habitable by humans. Because see, the part of Western Africa was not supposed to have been inhabited by any man. It was supposed to be only the animals. That was our wildlife, our kingdom. Mm -hmm. Western A Africa. It's the eastern coast down by where all the rivers were running. Where all the fertile land was. Not damn near by the desert. Mm -hmm. That was where all the animals were. The Serengeti, all that. That's where the animals roamed. But when we had to run into these crazy environments, mm -hmm. they knew because they were the first scientists that they had to scar themselves in order to create more blood cells and thus attract more oxygen so that they could breathe in an atmosphere that no white man could have breathed oh, in. So that's it. I got it. All right. Mm -hmm. See, we knew the sciences. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You see, we knew the sciences. So the scarification was a way to survive within that environment. And did not the Creator sickle ourselves so that we could live inside of that environment? Uh -huh. You see, so there's no accident to us as a people, no matter where we went uh -huh. on this planet, as peoples of color, no matter if we call ourselves Native Americans or, or, or Yamaka, Yamasi, all of us were of the melanated hue, and the original Native American looked like y'all. Yes, yes. The one with the invasion of the Asian coming over the Northern Bridge, that's when he started looking like yes. Cochise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You know that in Chicago, Right now, in Chicago, there's evidence of an underground civilization where a queen once ruled a tribe up there that was at war with a king in Kemet. And that right now, down in all of those little valleyways and, and estuaries down by the, by the um, by what do you call it, the Grand Canyon, they got coffins with pharaohs in there. And the native people there don't show it to everybody. They only bring the brothers and sisters down there to see these places. Mm -hmm. Your DNA is the map. Now, you notice as we went farther and farther west, or we went farther and farther north, we had only the six DNA series. Mm -hmm. But as we stayed south, not only is it down there, but if you see down there by Australia, you can see it over in the Australian peoples. Uh -huh. And the people in Papua New Guinea, on those places that uh, there are the, what's the name of that place where they had, they shot um, the Lord of the Rings? New Zealand. All along that area right there where white people are now inhabiting, their consciousness portion have gone up. Oh, yes. They have a higher consciousness ever since they interfaced with black peoples. And they away from the magnetic energy. Yeah, they're away from that entropic energy, you see. So now you're going to look below here. This is what they're saying. This is where the whole pool for them. Beware. This is all the murder. Now you know it was down here. Where was it? In, uh, it was not in Uganda. Because in Uganda there's a madness going on there. Where was it that they had the Tutsi and the Hutu slaughter going on? In Rwanda. In Rwanda. Well, that's when they began carting up African bodies and melting them down for the melanin. You saw when they were bulldozing hundreds of thousands of, of bodies, where did all their bodies went? They went into a vat and they were cooked and they were brought down to their molecular structure and studied and all of that went into the melanin and all that material, the fat and all of that went into the foods and, and all your uh, uh, medicinals and all of your uh, uh, makeup and all that shit and people are, well, what happened to, well, nobody, is, it, is anybody made a, a, a memorial for the bodies of the people slaughtered in the Rwandan uh, uh, massacre? Where are all the bodies? They say they're in mass graves. Well, show me the mass graves. See, nobody's listening and nobody's paying attention. Well, how many people already have died in Dafa? I mean, That's what I'm saying. They say already it was 
It's harvest time. It's harvest time because black people are essentially the pool of consciousness for the human strain on this planet. Yes, brother. Now that never that they born up together, they find some way of infusing it into white folks. Well, this is what's going into the medicinals. This is what's going into your uh, uh, cream that is is sun blocking and oh, all that type of stuff. Yes, yes, the sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah, they, they call it uh, what, uh, Leucoderm. Yeah, right. whatever it is. Yeah, Leucoderm, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Leuco is what? White. Right. Right. right, yeah. You know? Yeah. Did, did Gregory say that that has something to do with the child murderings in Georgia? That well, that was an interesting was thing. Yes, yeah. that was something interesting that happened that never really got to the surface. Mm -hmm. They were using particularly boys of Haitian descent because see the deep part about it is that some of us are uncircumcised that's why I say we had to get back to our circumcised children because the circumcision was the ritual and a lot of people say well no we didn't do no circumcision yes we did, we did. ancient Kemites did yes, circumcision did. because mm -hmm. nobody studies what happened before that see what happened before that was was a great trauma that changed the genetics of our people now at that time, and I know he says, well, how do you know? Well, what you have to do is study the metaphysics of the operation of the body and then you'll know what happened. The perfect female and the perfect male, for whatever that is and whatever that means, the human strain, the original perfect human was asexual. It didn't need to procreate because it was one entity without sex. It was a living vibration that had consciousness didn't need features for senses to express itself because it impressed its experience you see uh -huh. so it was an entity that we they said that if our if we were to see what our ancestors truly looked like if one of them human ancestors were to step to us today we'd all faint we'd probably die of a heart attack because we don't look nothing like them the way we look is try well, when we look on the, the, the walls and we see what the true genetics of humanity look like, we look at the ancient Chemites, we will see that their eyes were always made super big. And we're wondering, well, why are they making their eyes super big? Yeah. Was that some kind of, you know, artistic expression? No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. That's the way we were. The way they're depicting the aliens now with the greys and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you look at the gods, as they called them, the gods had eyes that had no whites damn near in them. Almost like they call them the doe-eyed gods. If you look at a deer, there's no white parts in a deer. The eye of the uh, higher animals, there's all black. And that's how our ancestors looked. We didn't have scleras. The, the shrinking of that, this part here that became the pupil is the effort of the, uh, the brain to try not to sift in all the dangerous rays of the sun. So it shrunk out the black, because black absorbs. It so it shrunk it in order to protect the brain from the high radiation light frequencies. So we, know, we don't look nothing like our ancestors from back in the days. Yeah. So where was I when I was trying to make a point? I don't even remember. Oh, the male and the female, going back to the um, Atlanta murders. The prepus and part of the scrotum and part of the, the, uh, the uh, what is it called, the gonads were taken out. Because the prepus has the darkest melanin. The head of the, the, if you look at the shaft of a melanated man, you'll see that it's blacker than his body. Because that's where the creator energy is, in that. And in the prepus, which used to cover it, that's the blackest part of his body. Now that was removed. Why? Because the prepus was the uh, pathological imitation of the female vulva. Hmm. And to become a man, it had to be removed. Uh -huh. This is why when you study, if you study the the um, Gray's Anatomy, which I did study, it. a lot of people came down on me because they were saying, well, damn, why you want to cut this off? That's going to take, uh, you know, inches away from the pleasure and all this bullshit. Why did our ancestors do it for 10,000 years, I asked them. 
Did you ask before that you start taking on the white man's uh, perspective, the white man's feminist perspective about circumcision? Did you ask them why they did it for 10,000 years? Not just in Africa, but all over the damn planet damn near. Because within us, we recognize and knew that that was not the way the male was made. And if you go into the old medical um, uh, books, which I studied, the Gray's Anatomy, it's funny how Gray's Anatomy is no longer being referred to as the best book on anatomy. But I go back to the old shit. That's why I don't like the new dictionaries. Because there's words in there in the old dictionaries back in the 50s and 60s that have words that don't exist here today. So what I have done is I studied and found out that when a child is being formed inside of the mother's womb, you can tell it's going to be either male or female because one or two, one of two different ducks are being formed. When it's a male, coming off of the kidneys is something called the Wolfian duct. And I'm, yeah, it's Wolfian duct, I believe. If it's first, then take what I'm saying as reversed. Okay, the Wolfian duct, we'll say. Coming off of the kidneys and the forming of the, fe the, the fetus is something called the Wolfian duct. And in the book, it states that the Wolfian duct begins to develop into the penis. And as the child is developing, the penis is developing, you get right to the head. And as the child is developed, all of a sudden, there's a spurt of growth that covers right over the, the head. And they say, well, why would it need to cover over the head? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, that's what is there. Nature did it. It's to protect it. I say, well, what if that's a pathological expression of nature? And the ancestors knew that and removed it. Because in the previous knowledge of the ancestors, they never had it before. Uh -huh. Now we go to the clitoris. And we say that the females who have a 10,000-year-old secret society of women who still do it, <laughs> Dealing with a tradition, they say, well, they're butchering it. Yeah, well, back in the days, they didn't butcher it because just like the umbilical cord was tied off and dried up, the same thing happened to the clitoris back then. Because the women knew what to drink and they knew what to use on the clitoris to dry it up and atrophy the masculine principle within themselves. Hmm. So for the woman to become a woman, she had to atrophy that so that she could be the woman. For the man to be the man, he had to take off the female presence on him. Mm -hmm. So when those, when you begin to see it from the wisdom of the ancients, you begin to understand. Now, when the man goes back after he's done what he's done and he's grown older, or he wants to become a priest, what does he do? He goes into his sanctuary, or goes into the place where he is in his monastery, and he puts on the habiliments of the monastery, and then he replaces the preface with the hood. Mm, that's the reason for that. That's the expression. Because he's now asexual and he has both sexes that he represents. He's not supposed to be sexual. The hood represents the return of the preface over this head. Mm. You see, when, when we stop falling into the bullshit, whatever it is that white people are trying to tell us about ourselves, and we stop playing into that game that white folks got us believing is real, of mm. course it's going to be butchering. Because if the sisters back then don't have the same cultural tools and cultural rituals and cultural knowledge that they did that they conducted that ritual for the females, of course it's going to be butchery and it's not going to be the same anymore. What is the same in our society anymore? But if they're trying to continue the tradition, it was for a reason. And for them to be castigated after doing it for 10,000 years and you coming along with all your knowledge and science and saying, well, you shouldn't do that. It's called female genital mutilation. What the hell does that mean? It's yeah, it's just another white woman's way of functioning and trying to take over. And most of the sisters and that's the one... Right. And most of the sisters promoting uh, uh, against that tradition were educated in Europe. Of course. You see. Exactly, all of them. So, I, 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 as far as the situation with the sisters and the prepus and all that, I know what that was for, so I'm not condemning them because in their own genetic memory of their ancestors, they're following through with what they knew to be right at the time. Mm -hmm. Our genetics are perverted. 
part of the expression of that perversion is the prepus and the clitoris. Now they can come to me and try to come at me with what they know. I don't care. I can still destroy any theory they bring because I'm dealing from a metaphysical, metahistoric, and metacultural perspective. They will never get behind what the culture is seeing in front. Not, they don't go behind why it happened. Some even the brothers and sisters in Africa don't even know why they still do it. They just know that they do it because their ancestors did it. Right. Exactly. Braiding their hair, doing it, what do you call it, putting it through their lip, putting it through their air. They know that this was for some reason, but it now becomes ornamentation or it just becomes medical now. You see, but it was for a scientific reason. We didn't do stupid things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, moving right along, if we want to deal with um, any questioning having to do with the DNA and consciousness, I'd be more than happy to speak on it. I have a few questions. Um, <laughs> Am I surprised? No. <laughs> um, I I'll give you two. I have several, but mm -hmm. I'll give you two. Uh, DNA series. Um, if you can uh, kind of draw out how they determine what is a series, I don't know if you can... Well, again, I'm not versed in what they're speaking about as far as a series is concerned, and I'm sure that... What was his name again? Uh, Dr. Kidd, Kenneth Kidd. He right, you know who could actually said. give you good knowledge on that? I spoke with Ann Brown. Good. <laughs> Very good. Now, what the DNA helix is... Mm -hmm. The series would have to match the protein configurations and where they are on the DNA helix. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as strands are concerned, it is tightly wound within this. There are six strand series like this. Let's just say this is six. And going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Now, understand and understand that we are not looking at a real thing. This is a workup. Imagine now that the particular ladder or the protein molecules that form the connection to the helixes. Mm -hmm. This is not a flat representation. This is not to be looked at as a two-dimensional figure, but a holographic uh, yes. instrument of divinity. Knowing that we are looking at essentially a three-dimensional representation of a quantum representation of a relative principle called God. And how does God, in the sequences that it presently represent as, manifest its will and its intelligence into the physical plane, but through these particular template patterns, which represent the specific work that it is to do at any given level within any given dimensional system of operation. Now I know that, that whatever the hell I just said it has to be deciphered very slowly when you listen to the tape again but again I'm saying to the people I don't have the sophistication and the knowledge of their hieroglyphics to describe this I can only give you what I understand from the information that I was reading on what they have deciphered mm -hmm. and what I know for a fact is that if they are separating them into strands they have studied specific uh, variations within the light code model that when isolated give them a specific reaction so when they said here for instance the six strand or six pairs of strands these six pairs of strands actually represent what are known today and you probably hear it as a 12 strand DNA the six pairs represent what is called the 12 strand spiritual DNA. In the 12 strand system, the first pair, let's just say the first pair, the 
first pair represents the physical plane. This is the plane where all things become tangible. The second through the sixth represents the non-physical. It's a kind of energy signature or pattern within the human energy field that you call the aura. So say you have a human being and this human being is wrapped within an aura. The DNA helix that this entity represents is striated as for what they have seen into six different bands of energy along one side of the DNA and six strands along the other side collectively forming the 12 strand or the 12 strand DNA, spiritual DNA of which the first one, the first strand represents what the physical body becomes whereas the other five strands are actually in vibratory frequencies surrounding the DNA and thus also linking up to the vibratory frequencies around the human body. So the more you go away from the original first strand, the more subtle the strands become and the more in tune they become with higher cosmic ray energies. Okay? So, let's just say, let's just give a breakdown for the record. Mm -hmm. Now according to, I forgot what this man's name was, I'm, I'm sure his name, but he broke down according to white folks, and of course we, would break, we broke them down in Kemet by the way we paired off the metal nature. Mm -hmm. You know, one nature across another nature. Yeah. The first pair, which is what we're speaking about on the physical level, represents all aspects of the formation and maintenance of what is called the physical body in third dimension. It controls our genetic patterning, the physical body, the predisposition to certain health conditions, our aging process, and the way that our body conducts the metabolic rates when we eat, when we drink, and so forth. Mm -hmm. The second pair governs the emotional body and creates and controls our genetic emotional profile. In other words, emotion is also uh, emblazoned or tattooed into the DNA if the emotion is carried consistently throughout our lives we pattern it into our DNA and shape our DNA for the next life so it governs the emotional body and our emotional profile or our predisposition to certain types of emotional conditions it governs our EQ or our our EQ rather than our IQ, which is our EIQ, which is our emotional IQ. You see what I'm saying? We have an emotional IQ. And there are certain strands, the second strand controls that. Our emotional intelligence circuitry, which determines the personality type. Uh, personality type, they would mean like, they call you a personality type A or your type B personality. This is the second strand. It tells you whether you're going to be introverted or extroverted. Definitely, you see, I'm extroverted. So, you know my, 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 my EIQ. Mm -hmm. The third pair governs what is known as the mental body, which controls the genetic mental profile. It determines the vectors of our mental energy, whether toward logic, linear, rational thinking, or towards, which is like scientists or engineers, or it's towards intuitive artistic expressions. It's what, whether you're optimistic or pessimistic constantly, whether you're prone to depression or, or, or hyperactivity and so forth. The fourth pair governs the, an operation of what is known as the soul in its relationship to the spirit and the body. It governs the karmic patterning or the karmic preconditioning based on what signatures of experience the soul still carries of past experiences to use as karmic life lessons for the body that the body will express as disease or predispositions to specific addictive tendencies. In other words, it is the specific genetic pattern that allows the soul to learn, which is why it becomes so dangerous when the new science of genetics are now leading towards people taking out your genetics and replacing them with another form of genetics. What they've done is 
they have removed the life lesson that your soul carries mm. for you to learn during the life that you're leaving here. Once you remove the disease by removing the genetic imprint of the disease, the soul that actually has the signature on, of the disease that is being represented through the specific template of the genetics, the soul now has this signature of experience that it was trying to unburden through its life lesson. It no longer can unburden its life lesson through the genetics and through the disease and thus becomes a robot, thus becomes unfeeling, thus becomes a murderer like Bundy. And I will say to you that the United States, remember, has the highest amount of serial killers in the world. So, knowing that, you have to understand that once you have taken away a person's genetic predisposition to certain diseases, you take away the reason why that disease was there in the first place, which is to teach us what not to do, or how to live through the burden that you may have created upon someone else, and based upon your guilt, and based upon the law of karmic reciprocity, you now have taken away the ability for that soul to harmonize themselves with the universe. And thus it becomes robotic, doing anything you want it to do, including murdering uh, uh, without feeling and conscience. Because it's no longer connected to the lesson which gives it its feeling of conscience. You see. Yes, brother. Going back to the story, uh, it seems to me that there's someone forgetting that in these strands you're talking about, these are layers of powers of the body to begin with. And each of these layers have a specific function. Mm -hmm. They do not spell out what these functions are. Mm -hmm. So they can talk about strands all you want to mm -hmm. until you go within yourself mm -hmm. and know, I don't say believe, mm -hmm. but know that as you get older, they begin to diminish. Mm -hmm. Until you, when you come down the core, your mission or here is over, mm -hmm. and you go back to mm -hmm. the ancestral mm -hmm. world, but having completed your duty. Mm -hmm. But they don't look at it that way because, number one, intellectually, they are crippled mm -hmm. in that field. Mm -hmm. So all this talk about what they are discovering, it was lost. Mm -hmm. So how can you discover that which you lost? What well, it is, you didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And since you didn't understand, you should make little talk about the big mystery mm -hmm. rather than trying to interpret it for somebody else, something you don't know. Precisely. And that's why you have to look at it also in a larger frame of consciousness. The fact of the matter is we as melanated gods forgot who we were. And the only reason we would allow someone like him to rule us is because we don't know who the fuck we are. All right. We don't. <laughs> Now, the reason is, right now, is he is out there digging up all of our memory banks. He is there doing things by his own lack of ability to know. His drive was what we had within us. You got to remember, we the ones that fell. When they talk about the gods that fell, it's us. And remember, we were the ones that was playing Yaku. And remember, Yaku was a black man. Now, what fool who had the knowledge of God would want to create creatures to do work for him? Now, think about that, because all the stories have analog analogs or analogies to things that happened to us. And remember, myth is simply spiritual history. Mm -hmm. And that we are now reliving our consequences for our actions when we began to take it for granted that we were gods. And when gods begin to play with no responsibility, consequences come into being. And then we started playing around and we began degenerating based upon our consequences and now we live it out all the hell that we created for ourselves. And tell you the truth, this creature that is part of us is us. That's correct. That's <laughs> now correct. know that for a fact That's that this creature that you call the Caucasoid yeah, yeah. is the worst of us. That's correct. It is the result of That's your right. disease. Oh yes, the disease of the human genetic strain is him. That's right. And the reason why he's so preoccupied with disease is because he is a disease. Okay. That's true. 
So you have to understand his proclivity to be preoccupied with something means that that's what he's drawn to by nature. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Mm -hmm. You recall that the, when the Rosetta Stone was supposed to have been found in Egypt, and this gentleman had been there for a long time trying to decipher what it meant, how to read it, etc. And it has several types of, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, had three, yeah, different right. three different languages, the Aramaic, the Greek, and the yeah. Kemetic. Uh, the gentleman went back to England and uh, he was trying to decipher, what is it saying? What is it saying? And uh, they couldn't find nobody that had did any extensive study on the uh, learning. Right. One day he was sitting up there in uh, Egypt and he's trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then he turned to one of the persons who was with him. Uh, accompanied him. He said, I don't understand what the heck is this is saying. So what is it saying? The guy read it off to him. He yeah. turned around and looked at it. Yeah. Said, you know this? He said, yes, this is my ancestral work. Yes. He fled back to England and now he became the master of the resistance. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the problem is, the problem is, we don't know that when we see it. Now, when a man like Oyibo comes amongst us, that's Imhotep returned. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And now, now, do we recognize Imhotep? No. But if we knew who just the fuck we were, we'd say, oh, Imhotep's back. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. But we just say, oh, that's just another nigga looking for some money. Mm -hmm. Because we done turned into niggas. We, we had to fall into the realm of niggerhood to climb out, to know where we came from. You see, all of this is our story. This is our whole test. This is the contract for activity that we made with the Creator God to go through and purge. This is a prison planet. This is a prison planet for all of the fallen gods who've got to spend time. We do in time. And ain't that what we're in right now? Doing time? We are in time and space. That's right. Uh, yes, Bill, brother. you were dealing with the uh, six Ah, yes, the six strands. Strand. Brother, bringing us and back to the are. point. And we were up to number four. Mm -hmm. Now, number five governs our consciousness communal cluster energies. In other words, all of the previous one, two, three, and four essentially collectively now are regulated by the fifth pair. It is the homing signal strand the way certain souls of a specific experiential matrix find one another again and again to the mutual fulfillment of their own soul's purpose. So here we are together today doing something that we probably did a few times and we now going up each grade. We might have did this just sitting around and doing nothing, probably getting high, you know, blowing some mushrooms. <laughs> Now we went up another level and we did it, but then we was sitting around, you know, messing around with some, uh, some, some spirits. But we were contemplating the Creator. Here we are now, contemplating the Word, which means that we don't need any artificial means to come to a point where we are now interfacing with the language of Spirit. <coughs> and not interfacing by saying, well, Jesus walked in water. No. That's bullshit. No. Yeah, well, who, who is Jesus for? Who is the Christ? The Christ is the sun. And if you look at it on the ocean, and you see the light of it on the ocean, it looks like the God is walking on water. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So yeah. we no longer are going along for the fairy tales, because no. we are the kindergarten. No. Little Red Riding Hood and all that. What does all that mean? No. And this is why schools like this must happen. This is why it's hard for me, or even Queen, uh, the Sister Puma, to find... The, the, the ears and the minds to take to the next stage because I want to take the children and stop them from here. Mm. From here. Not from this bullshit, you know, ABC. If I had my way, now let me just go to the sixth pair. The sixth pair aligns our life energy signature with all of creation and the divine will of the creator. So you go from one to six. The seventh energy is where we are now locked into. That's the next door. That's when we rest. That's where they say, and the Creator rested. That seventh energy frequency for, is the doorway to the higher energy frequency bands that are, are inside of us as the junk DNA that they speak about. They talk about junk. Well, we don't know what kind of DNA. What does this mean? It means that when you fell, all of this just fell apart. It broke apart. We fragmented. 
Therefore, our consciousness fragmented. And we fell into a seven year or a seven, quote, numerical cycle. This six strands, once we have traversed it to that level and harmonized all of the energies represented therein, the seventh door opens up and we can rest. What does rest mean? To put down your burden. And the burden is the physical flesh, this kind of flesh that we got to carry around that burps and farts and belches and pisses and shits all over the place. This is a burden. We didn't have to do all of this because we are locked down in redundancy. And life is a redundancy at this point because it's not moving forward. Now, like I said, if I had my way and I had the children, I would build a school where nobody would begin teaching children how to read until they're seven. Because what you do is you create myopic children when you have them reading two-dimensional words too early before their eyes are developed. So immediately you got your children wearing glasses by the time they're five, six, seven, and eight. I would begin by having children outdoors. Children cannot learn indoors. The first place they would be going would be places where they would be interfacing with first-hand experience. Remember I told you about first-hand experience versus second-hand experience. All school for children in inner cities is second-hand experience. Therefore, they can't learn anything. Mm -hmm. A children is a first-hand experiential creature. They want to touch and feel and smell everything. That's, that's because that's how the whole body learns. But if you sit them in a class too long, they're going to get bored to death, and they're not going to want to learn a damn thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a child uh, learning, especially reading, too soon, the two-dimensionality develops a two-dimensional mind frame matrix. And now the child has to look because its ability to focus on three-dimensionality is gone. Why? When you take a child outside, there is depth, breath, and perception when you're looking into trees or into forests or off across water or looking across land. When you've got a child reading out of a book, the eye energy waves stop at the book. And the imagined pattern has to come from what the eye is supposed to perceive from physical life firsthand. It is trying to interface with that because the light waves are not coming back to him in dispersed manners. It's coming back to him in his fervor, flat wave back in his eyes. So it's not developing. It's not exercising. It's not opening and closing. The eye, the iris, it's not being nurtured with light frequency wave bands that come directly from the light of the sun or directly from the light of the moon which feeds the eyes so the body and the brain are not being fed all the light wave energy is necessary to develop these patterns, these strands mm. so I would take the child completely out of a classroom and that child would never go into a classroom until it was seven years of age when it's in the seventh year at the time when it's gone through its full first cycle for cellular development then I will begin to teach it certain things that it necessarily has the talent to do. Because during the time that you're observing your child, while it ain't going around whether you know how to do math, you will be doing things that will teach the child what it is it has the pertinent. It will know what, you, you will see the child probably building things and you'll know, oh, this child is in the building. Or like your ancestors will just look at the child and say, oh, that's so and so. And immediately that child will want to do this. But if you don't know what that child is about, and know that that child is older than you because the child mm -hmm. came here after you from the ancestral world and thus is older than you that child has a blueprint for activities beyond the time you're going to be here so if you're not developing like the ancient natives said we think once we make a decision we think seven generations be are beyond us mm -hmm. why do we think seven generations because we know that the child is here is the child of the seventh generation beyond that and I'm saying well if I'm not thinking about what this child may be bringing back by what it has from what I've learned and what it is tuned to do if I'm not paying attention to what this child is trying to say and instead trying to lock this child's talent down to fit my own consciousness criteria I'm gonna stagnate this goddamn race into redundancy and it's gonna just come up with some dumb dull ass bastards that are going to be either you know cattle fodder cannon fodder you see what I'm saying we have useless eaters like they call us mm -hmm. only because they have purposefully suppressed the ability for consciousness and spirituality to grow the way the cosmic 
consciousness has grown. So human beings are at least 2,000 years behind the cosmic clock. Because we've been locked down in Christianity for 2,000 years, which has stopped us from spiritually developing. So 2,000 years behind the, spirit, the cosmic clock. This means that all the planets and all the suns and solar systems and galaxies are 2,000 years, according to our chronology, ahead of us in consciousness development. And we're still trying to praise Jesus. Is that why the um, Christian president sounds so dumb when I hear him on TV? Oh, they sound really <laughs> innate. They sound childlike and stupid. Don't they sound infantile? Yes, because yes. that's where they are. He is dumb. He, he oh, is dumb. He's dumb. <laughs> okay. Well, you can't help it but that. You have to be dumb going in there. You know, to just surrender your, your, your logic and your reasoning to a story about somebody you ain't never met. You don't know this man. See, that's why vicar you've been conditioned to vicarious experience, and that's why you would accept a vicarious savior. Just, just, just for the mm -hmm. brothers and sisters who will be watching this uh, tape, who go to church and who have had um, uh, earth-shattering experience, so to speak. There, there, there have been um, incidents, say, for an example, where people have been healed. Mm -hmm. Uh, women, uh, I, I know of, it is said of a, uh, of a woman who a car ran over her child and uh, lodged on the child and in that moment of, you know, just just trying to save the child, call upon Jesus and literally mm -hmm. lift that car mm -hmm. off the child. How do you, how do you deal with that? How do you well, with what that? they are doing is using a tool of consciousness. You could have called on Heru mm -hmm. if you were taught what Heru is. Mm -hmm. But you see, black people are the ones, we are the ones, native peoples are the ones who are so spiritually based, it doesn't matter what we call it. But the problem is that they've turned that into a political weapon mm -hmm. where we become atrophied by the activities of the ones who control the God that you call. Mm -hmm. But see, you are the one who is the God calling upon yourself mm -hmm. to lift that. It was the fear and, chemically, the adrenaline from your adrenals. And the kidneys are the seat of your ancestral energy. And the unconditional love between the mother and the child. Oh, there it is. And once that happens, you can't find the strength because your kidneys are the basis of your ancestral strength. And when you call upon that strength, you call upon your kidneys. And in ancient Chinese medicine, it is the kidneys that control the muscles. And if that's the case now, and your kidneys also are the seat of your ancestral key, I think it's called your jinn, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that energy the there, chi. no, not the chi, there's a certain type of energy called a, the, the, the jing and something else. But we know it's the overall chi. But, but that's what you're calling up, then you're calling on your ancestors' energy. It's already you, because you've been made to believe it's a vicarious savior outside of yourself, but the Savior didn't do it, you did it. Would that apply also when mm -hmm. the preacher lays on hands and uh, someone is uh, healed, right. people in a wheelchair? Yes, come. it's called suggestion. I can make you heal because as a, as a okay, I'm also a, um, <laughs> I say this, then people say, oh, that's how you do that. No, I'm also a hypnotist. Mm. A th uh, a one who deals in therapeutic hypnosis. And the first thing they teach you is that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. It's true. Mm. Exactly. What you do is you open up through trust and believe that the person is there to help you. So the people going up there looking for Jesus to help them already has opened up that part of themselves that will be open completely to the suggestion that Jesus is healing them. Anything they think is safe. Anything. And whatever I touch you and say, be you, because I'd be looking at this thing on TV where these white, with one little white man amongst all these black people who's going over there healing people. Knocking them down. Knocking them down on their asses. <laughs> I'm saying this is crazy. You are the healer within you. Can't nobody transfer something to you that he ain't got. I'm yes, sister. My question is, mm -hmm. is that for the last 10 years or more, I, I have experienced every night, if I allow it to be, mm -hmm. where I look into the light, 
Yes. Uh -huh. When am I in contact with my Interesting. Family? That's interesting. Sometimes light frequencies can open up certain crystalline lattices and chemical memories that you have of past experiences because they live inside of you as switches, chemical switches. And if you look into the light, that may be the spirit catcher that you have. Certain people lose things, like certain people can get into trance just by using a ball and twirling it. Some people use water. Yes. Now, if you look in the light and that triggers something into you, that means that that's the way that you trip this mundane reality and fall into the other reality. You see? The secret is that supposedly at the time when we were created gods, the, the fall caused the split in our brain. And this is why you have two halves. Oh, think about what yeah. you just said. We come out here and we can manifest what we need. Mm -hmm. Like you can call on a God, it could be your mother, mm -hmm. or anybody that trans that, that crossed over. Mm -hmm. If you feel you need them at the time, and you can manifest in your life mm -hmm. what you think you need to save you and take you over. It's a, it's, you know? it's a, it's, it is who you are. Mm -hmm. And in the DNA and in the RNA and all the rest of that stuff, whatever it is that they classify, the total whole you is a divine being mm -hmm. of light. And that what we are looking at as a texture and as feelings is based upon a chip that we have, a biological chip that has caused us to agree with the present way things are. Reality is an agreement. Yes, that's all it is exactly so when you break the agreement people who have the gift of breaking the agreement when you look in the light you break the agreement uh -huh. and by breaking the agreement to say this is this and that is that you fall into the reality that just says no this is not that and then you see things oh, yeah, that's what I do when I do not you know when I'm doing my naturopathic healing and I, I infuse my ability to see and read with what they need and sometimes on the phone I can listen to their voice and they say hello hello are you there are you there and I go into this place where I hear what's going on because the voice has within it little conversations going on and I'm hearing them in their voice talking to other people and I hear the, the pain from the organ that is causing the problem and I'm saying well, what am I what am I paying, tuning into I don't know what I'm listening to, but I can tell the person, well, your liver's got problems. And this is problem. And they say, well, oh, yeah, well, the doctor said that, yeah, that my liver was, that's, how do you know that? I don't know. And I don't want to be like the white man and say, well, due to my ventricular centricular and down my centricular supula, I don't give a shit. If I can help you, based on what gifts I have of being able to go into what I call my still point. Mm -hmm. That's the place you find. That's where, I go. That's where you go. Mm -hmm. That's where you go. Meditation. Exactly. That's where your thoughts no longer control you and keep what you think to be the reality in place. See, it's the thought process that maintains the agreement. And if you stop thinking along the track of the agreement, or if you keep stop, if you stop keep reading the contract off and saying, okay, you are supposed to see brown as this color. You are supposed to see this shape as this. Once you stop the agreement, you fall into a place that's, and see, that happens when you dream. Mm -hmm. When you right. sleep and dream. Yes. You There's no more agreement. You can fly, yeah. you can do whatever the hell you want. Absolutely right. right. Exactly. There's no more agreements. There's no, there's no state. You go back to where you can really, really operate as yourself. Uh, I wanted to finish this. I did. It's on tape. <laughs> well, yes, sir. tell us the difference between the six and the nine, I mean. Okay, well, you see, within this 12-strand DNA, the six and the six, they said, um, uh, Jimi Hendrix spoke about something, say, it's six or nine. That's his song. Well, essentially, it's the same thing. Uh, the, within the six-strand DNA that is coupled with the other side six-strand DNA, Together you get the 12. Within that 6 and that 12 is the 9. What he, is, what he is finding and what they're finding in these people is the fact that we were degenerated by three specific strands, which is that capstone on the pyramid that was separated from the rest of the pyramid. That three represents 
the closed circuit of consciousness that was with the God consciousness that separated us from the total pyramidal energies, which is six-sided, mm -hmm. you see in the pyramid, that separation of the pyramid is the separation of us from our total selves. Mm -hmm. You see, all this representing the six and the nine. Which together brings twelve, which ultimately is what you said it's going to be. Yeah, which, yeah, nine. exactly. You now have not right now. This past three here, which is the elusive part of ourselves, which is what is known as the triune self, the knower, the thinker, and the doer. When these all come together with the physical body and become one and tuned in. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Just getting a piece of choice. Or become one and tuned in. Then that I, that is the all-seeing eye, which is the seed cell within the physical body, which is the all-seeing eye of the first eye, the pineal, that begins to awaken. This is known as, and because it is seen as the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, to show you when the Holy Ghost come down, it has tons of fire on top of your head. Well, you see, the reason for that is, once you begin to pull together all of the energies necessary to make you the whole being, you raise the Kundalini through the seven chakras, again, trapped within that seven cycle, you raise the Kundalini through the seven chakras, and then you, at the base of the medulla oblongata, that's where that is, you cross a fiction. Crucifixion. You cross a fiction, which means to increase. Crucifixion doesn't mean to kill, it means to increase. And when that fuel, which represents the Jesus energy, which is what you, that fuel that you save when you don't sex yourself, you, you raise that energy, crossing at that space, at the pain right here, which is called place of the skull in the Bible, or Golgotha, or Calvary. In Greek, Calvary means skull. I mean Golgotha. And in Calvary, uh, the same thing. Uh, you cross over the barren land, which is the place that separates you into ignorance. And you cross over and you light the pineal, which is the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Ah, okay. All right. All right. So when you're looking at all of this, it's fine for what it means you know, we're supposed to see the higher consciousness, but what are we going to do? What is still left within us? What remains atrophied? What has become comatose within the body that we need to reawaken? And that is we need to shut down half of our sexual energy so that we can raise that energy into lapping, instead of coming down here, you know, your father said, don't, you can't use both hands at the same time. It's either the little head, which gives you little knowledge, or the big head, which gives you the bigger knowledge, or the wider space of the knowledge. So this is it. Yeah, well, definitely little head takes away your knowledge because after that, you're going to sleep. Yeah. Right? The big head, once you don't do that, you awaken to the higher self if you can bring that sperm back up in through the vesicles, through the sun plexus or your solar plexus, which then raises the light through the lamp of God that taketh away the sins. The sins meaning the ignorance of the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. But that's why the Catholic Church, they say that the, um, the man should... Um, not marry. Not marry. Yeah, well, you see, but it's too... It, it, we're in a time when everything's going in the toilet. It's nice to have it back then because they were trying to imitate a time in Kemet. Oh. Oh, right. yeah, but, it, you know, eh, no, it ain't going to work because you're nothing but pedophiles and, 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 and homosexuals. You know, how are you going to put an animal in there to act like, I mean, you can get a monkey to walk up right, but it's still going to act like a monkey one day down the line. Oh. Yes, brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to, if you could, elaborate on uh, um, another concept, both Dr. Calvin Robinson, when I asked him about that. This is the brother who introduced me to this research, mm. Dr. Calvin Robinson, mm -hmm. and um, also Professor Lebo gave some insight on this, but um, the earth, which is uh, on a 24 degree uh, axis, mm -hmm. uh, the sun, and I'll just sun here, but as the earth goes around the sun, the rays of the sun hit, hit the, the earth 
along the equator mm -hmm. most directly. Yes. You know, hit it. Um, yeah. Uh, and the Earth, of, of course, uh, Africa. Right. Uh, the equator passes directly uh, through the center. Through the center of Africa. Of yes. Africa. Which is and directly below, essentially, right there, where they found the highest trends. Right. Uh, and also, uh, Africa sits in the center. Of yes. The Earth. So that the rays of the sun, life rather, is in the rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you block off the rays of the sun from hitting anything, it dies. Yes. If you put a blanket over grass where the sun can't hit it, it dies. Mm -hmm. There can be no life without, without the, the sun. sun. So life is in the rays of the sun. Exactly. So if you have the rays of the sun hitting the earth most directly along the equator, mm -hmm. and Africa, you know, is the, the equator passes in the middle of Africa, then you will maximize the potential, or you will maximize the environment for sustaining life and any evolutionary process of life, mm -hmm. because you have the maximum life rays hitting the earth, and that has something to do with humans evolving in Africa and this continuity of human life uh, reflected in Africa and reflected in the nine of the twelve strands mm -hmm. of DNA, which is his explanation for why you have nine strand, uh, a nine series of DNA within Africans, uh, the rays of the sun is diminished, you know. Yeah, on that trajectory, they, yes. Yeah, they don't hit the earth as directly as they do mm -hmm. uh, in the maximization of life there. And I wanted you to kind of speak to that in terms of uh, that explanation. Okay, um, first things first, we have to go back much farther than what the, than the history of what they are speaking about at this time. The history of the planet is not what we see according to the continental divides today. I'm going to first put up this particular sign here and it's an elongated picture of the earth. Mm -hmm. And know that before the continental divide that what we know as South, Af South America and Africa were once one large continental mass. Mm -hmm. And that this whole mass that you see here, Asia and everything, all of this were together. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the earth was not at its sixth cycle, or its two working through the four. It was working on a more, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'll get them for you. The ellipsis and the angle to which the sun was hitting it was not as intense. Because that's the time when they call it the Garden of Eden. All right? The temperature was the same around every place on the planet. That's when it was all together. Right, that's when these continental drifts here were not separated. Mm -hmm. They were all together. And essentially, most of this land mass, and you see here, was not separated. The angle of the earth shifted when it got hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? The separation that we see here, where you see... Uh, Mexico and so forth, this area here is now under a lot of controversy as to whether or not this was the area that the Africans originated in. See now, this is why I'm saying what I'm saying to you because a lot of the information that we're studying as Africans is old, antiquated information because this European is digging all over the planet looking for himself and he's finding us and we can't, we, can't dis, we can't just dismiss any of the information because Sheikh Anta Diop, Dr. Van Sertema and them are coming up with information all about Africa, which is fine. But Africa was not Africa at the time we were coming up in our high civilizations. What became Africa after Africinus, the guy that the Roman uh, named it, uh, the black Roman was named uh, general, this is not Africa. We have to completely... Uh, uh, rechart the consciousness that we are using, the particular blinders, the particular field of, uh, of, of, of awareness that we're using to try to find ourselves, we can't use that anymore. It's antiquated, it's not for use for black folks anymore. 
If there has been a great, within all of our writings, a great continental cataclysm, we must go back to that point where we were joined first before we were split mm -hmm. and then study what happened because in the southern parts of what we call the Americas today live or are evidence of what the primary pyramids looked like before they went to Africa. That the step pyramid that you see in ancient Africa was essentially a copy of the ones that you saw in the Mesoamerican place. The ones where you saw the step pyramids built but built with, with, with certain... Whoa! What the heck was that? Uh, you Mexico? Uh, uh, this, yeah, in Mexico. Oh man, I broke your chair. I mean, broke your chair. My, my, my fat ass. Um, in Mexico, in Mesoamerica, and in America itself, they're finding pyramids. They found pyramids in China, pyramids in South America that predate the older pyramids that you see as the Sakata pyramids in Africa. Now we're not looking at it and saying that it might not have been up here. It, it might be one landmass and one set of people that did the whole damn thing. What would be evidence of people traveling? Yeah, but I'm saying we travel back there to find that. It's not the evidence of people. We found ourselves over there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we found Nubian heads over there. What were Nubian heads right doing over there? Asia. Wait a minute, they found one in Brooklyn. I did a lecture where this guy was digging up and excavating to do some work on his house and came up with a three-ton head sitting up underneath his house. Black as you wanted. The same black Olmec head was found in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So we have been all over this planet. They're finding black people up here in China. Yes. Yeah. We're finding black people. Wait a minute. They found... Huh? Why not? That's what I'm saying. So they find it out down here in India that a man named Bodhidharma walked 8,000 miles into central China, a black man, and established a place called Shaolin. The Shaolin Temple. Where along that 8,000 mile track, he studied the animals. Learn their ways, the serpent, the 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 the, the um the tiger tiger and all the, the the eagle, he studied them and their ways and developed a particular type fighting style. Now, over here you see Olmec heads. And the Mayan people say that the Olmec were their fathers and mothers. And when you look at the Olmec, of course the white man says to you that that's the, we had to make the thick lips because we had to make them weather strong, you know, weather weather. Yeah. These motherfuckers are something else. <laughs> and look at these are not having any. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the same thing with this guy named David Icke, that everybody been buying this thing about the reptilians and the yeah. thing. Now, he got some information on the, the Illuminati, but he's a racist. Yes, he is. Now, if he says that white people came down from the Caucasus Mountains and built all the civilizations that you see that out here, that everybody digging up, I'm trying to figure out why these white people didn't put their face on all these thousands of statues. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If you yeah. built the damn thing, wouldn't you have put up your own damn face? That's right. What do you think? You would think. But there's no evidence of him anywhere, but he's coming down to try to steal it through the New Age movement. But again, let's go back to this. At the time when the earth was, was on a specific ellipsis, mm -hmm. the whole earth was surrounded by what is known as a um, compressed hydrogen envelope, which created a, an atmosphere that was perfect. There was no death. Death was by choice. You just wanted to leave your body, you left it. There was no disease. The animals and the humans connected telepathically. Now I says, well, what is this dream world you're talking about? It's a world that if I could perceive it, no, it's, it already existed. Because there's no thought that is new. No. There is no thought. I asked somebody, tell me a new thought. There's no new thought. Everything that we're participating in is a pre-existing experience based upon the envelope. Whatever is happening to the trajectory metaphysically, why we tilted to that 24 degree angle, was to cleanse the planet physiologically and spiritually, psychically, by creating certain aberrations that would force the life forms to have to adapt 
and thus evolve. Evolution does not happen without trauma. If the human strain were to be too perfect and everything would be wonderful, they'd die out. Perfection equals death. So there is a constant changing and evolving and moving of the particular environmental situation to create conditions whereby man may evolve. Which is why they're finding only six in the most advanced industrial areas. And down in the new areas where the people are going to be rising from, you're finding nine. The next stage of development for humanity is in the continent now known as Africa. And where they're going to find the genius and leadership is going to come out of the melanated peoples and that scares the living shit out of them. <laughs> well, this, it seems to me that the war on terror is being moved to Africa. Cause I've been well, that's where they were going all along. That's where the, uh, the you have to know, the same with AIDS. It started with uh, faggots, white faggots, and then it moved all the way in and they can't find a white man with uh, HIV AIDS anymore. Everybody that has HIV AIDS is black. So how do you plan to keep people subjugated? You keep their trust by making them believe that you know more than they do. Which is why I keep telling people, stop listening to this, this Negro who's telling you about his white Jesus. And get away from the church. Get away from the education system. Get away from the hospitals. Stop it. Yeah, well, you see, that's when we got, then we get, then, then, then we get creative. <clears throat> see, that's what happens. When, when situations force you, you get creative. Before you get incarcerated. Exactly. Well, you see, no, you don't have to be incarcerated because they ain't got enough jails to put everybody in. You see, they, but they got a little concentration camps. They ain't got enough room in them concentration camps. They can't do it. They can only go along with our own uh, 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 what do you call that word? You, you, permission yes. to go along. With your consent. With your consent. I would like to go. Okay, let me, let me uh, go ahead. Let me, let me finish are you, with this. Are you uh, telling us that it's uh, unemployment or death? Yeah. Alright, I just thought that was. Okay. <laughs> unemployment or death. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I, I had just wanted to add that um, when you were talking before about the down in Mexico, what they taught me was that they would give um, uh, an enigma called the four, what is the four-sided triangle? Mm -hmm. And the four-sided triangle turned out to be the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And because the pyramids were created by the the Jaguar people, which are the Olmecs. The Balam. The Balam. Mm -hmm. And what it is is that when you have described before the, the triangle being the three, the, the thinker, the knower, mm -hmm. the doer, and the doer, and the, doer. Yeah. And the four side mm -hmm. was the beer. Yeah. Because they say, mm -hmm. you know, you come into those processes and then you become it. Mm -hmm. So everything becomes shape shifting. Or being mm -hmm. as of the world. Yeah, and the shapeshifters used to change the genetic coding along the lines. That's why they used to look like different animals. They would take their energy wave signatures and change the DNA patterns that kept them locked into their physical human features and degenerate those particular lines and go along the lines that would be the animals. And then they would they would focus their energies in the DNA along certain patterns that matched the animals and then became those animals. Yeah. This is how deep your people were. Yeah, okay, so, so I'm just going to just close it out and I'll come right back to you. The, what, what they're saying is absolutely true, but when the time comes, and I, I conjecture this as a metaphysician, when the time comes, because right now the sun is going through some incredible activity, there are so much solar wind and explosions on the sun because the sun is now changing its own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Remember, a sun is actually an earth in formation. Mm -hmm. As the sun loses its nuclear fuel, it begins to shrink and become molten. After it dies, it begins to float or shoot away and becomes the prodigal son of the Bible. Until it is caught by another sun system, and then it returns to the Father, gets locked into its orbital vibration or its orbital symmetry, and then eventually cools to the point where it has life. 
Now that's where they get the principle of Adam, where Eve comes from the rib of Adam. Mm -hmm. You see? So a son is the youngest form of life in existence. It is the next earth. The Adam and then the Eve. And that Eve essentially becomes the Garden of Eden, which then becomes the molten life that, that begins to become, after it's shrunken down into a certain form, it then takes on a certain kind of life force, and then all kinds of life can then be seated on it, because life is existing on different invisible areas of existence, and it is always looking to hone in on certain frequency dynamics in other lower planes that are compatible with its next level of devolution. So life comes from higher to lower, not lower to higher. higher okay. You see, it seeds itself in these earths that become earths after the sun has cooled over billions upon billions of years. So now, this present 24, uh, uh, 24 degree angle will change. Mm -hmm. It cannot stay at this present trajectory if it is to do what it's supposed to do with the earth. This present trajectory of the planet is to align it because the, 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 the present uh, distance between the earth and the sun has to change. It has to become different and the ellipsis becomes changed. Remember, it's not, this is the sun. The earth is not just going around the sun the way you see like Saturn. The earth is on an ellipsis where this is the sun and this is the earth and it's doing this. Uh, uh. So that's where you create your seasons. The clo right now in August we are the closest to the sun. By the time December comes we are here. You see what I'm saying? And then again, because we are turning at a certain, there is another sun behind it that because we are on a specific path and trajectory, this is also spinning and we don't see it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And as we are moving, as all these are happening, this is the other part of it, and this is to say to the other the physicists and so forth, none of this is a static reality. Mm -hmm. What we do when we study astrology and all the rest of these sciences, we look at these prints and we think that this is a static reality. Right now, this earth doesn't look the same way anymore after this picture was taken. And this was taken four or five years ago. There's no way this looks the same. In fact, London, England, or England, is sinking in the ocean. Okay? Wait, now check it. Check it now. That's why they got to find other places. New Zealand is the place where they're moving to. Oh, that's where they're going. Yeah. Another place is Madagascar. Madagascar is going. Yeah, constantly moving away from the continent. Exactly. Because the earth is a vibrating conscious entity. And what has happened is we, the sent, we have a son that is our father, uh -huh. which art in heaven. Uh -huh. Hollow be thy name, which is the place where your pineal is. Yeah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now earth is your physical body. Uh -huh. This is below the sun as it is in heaven. And heaven is plexus, which is the sun plexus. Here's your heaven. Give us this day, which is the day, our daily bread. What is that bread? That bread is that seed that is secreted every 29 and a half days from the solar plexus area into the bloodstream, uh -huh. which sits at the right kidney for three days. And if you don't sex it, it rises to the right hand of the Father. Uh -huh. That's the secret. That's it gets it. our daily bread. Uh -huh. That's why they say Jesus is the bread of life. Uh -huh. Okay? God, but forgive us our trespasses. When you trespass, you go into areas of your body with your mind that you're not supposed to. Uh -huh. You see? And you see, we ask the trespasses for, lead us not into temptation. Because to tempt one is to make one or to provide one with a chance to stray. Uh -huh. You see? So, so let me not look at the, the sexual act and get overindulgent into that because it takes all of my spiritual energy down to the physical plane. Yes, it does. You see? So give us this day our daily bread and, and for, uh, forgive us our trespasses and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Now what is evil? Evil is simply that which is L-I-V-E, to live. Deliver us from the way we live. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You understand? Because this is, the, this is the mirror image right here. Yes. You understand? Deliver us from evil. And lead us not into temptation, for that is the kingdom. 
Right? Because that is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. They're telling you who it is you're talking to. Amen. Right here, the Son. <laughs> so know that inside of us is the Son and that we are Son creatures. Yeah. But here now, this is what I wanted to say. Wow. Know that. The sun that we are going around, and this being our earth, for instance, and all the other planets that we have in our soul, Ra, S-O-U-L-R-A system, our sun-soul system, this is not standing still because we are inside of a galactic blueprint that is also moving at the speed of light into the, into the oceans of forever. We sail on the oceans of forever. And that there are billions of other galaxies just within this layer of reality, remember, within just this layer of reality, we perceive a reality that is billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of solar systems. We ain't even talked about the other realities no. above and beyond those. No. And they all interdisperse and connect through certain grid lines that we have the ability to interface and cross over into. Now, we are moving at this point because right over here, just for instance, is a system called Alcyon. A-L-C-Y-O-N-E. That is the central sun, father sun for our total galaxy. This is what was called by the ancient Mayans and the ancient Olmecs, I mean the ancient Olmecs, Hunab. Hunab Ku. Uh -huh. That is the central sun that is teaching and dictating and giving us all the information that we need. Now that central sun is aligned to not only this sun, but it's aligned to all the planetoids. And right now it's affecting us in such a way that the electromagnetic energy in a planet is now changing. The magnetic energy of this earth is dropping considerably. Whoa. Yeah. The magnetic energy on the planet is dropping considerably, which means the electrical energy is rising. Oh, it is. Yes. Which means now, now here's what the secret is. I'm, I'm, you don't mind me straying off a little bit. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Here's the secret. In the dynamics of movement, we'll say that electricity is the yang energy that moves uh -huh. in its linear capacity. But as electrical energy moves in its linear capacity, it creates an effect, a magnetic principle. So as there is an electrical pulse, around that electrical pulse is a magnetic lag. So every energy, every spark of electricity creates a magnetic envelope. So now here we are within this earth structure and the earth is moving at a specific trajectory. It has now picked up in speed which was, you see the, the seasons are flying by, days are flying by. Yes. Yes. It has picked up in speed, yes. which means that the electrical envelope, the electrical speed now is causing a lot of uh, uh, differentiation, a lot of madness. But let me just get to this point. With the speeding up, the envelope is getting a lot more intensified. Now, with that speeding up, there is going to be a slowing down inside of here now. This is the read part because we are now aligned with Alcyon, which create every 13,000 years we align with a certain aspect of Alcyon, and the planet begins to slow down. As soon as the planet begins to slow down, the electrical, the, the, the magnetic lag drops, and it is the magnetic lag that creates the illusion that we are in. When the magnetic lag drops, the electrical potential goes up, and that's when spirit enters. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. A very high spiritual energy. But those who are in place from the old lag paradigm, which is what religion is based on, those who are in place who have kind of been the parasite sucking on the spiritual energies at that time are going to fight to maintain their own life. Because the spiritual quotient, the EIQ and the SIQ, is going to rise to such a level that we're going to see through all the bullshit. So they can't pretend that it's a democracy anymore. Uh -huh. They can't pretend. They have to go into terror alert. The terror is them. Well, 
They are terrified. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying, yeah. yeah. We know they're the terror, but they're terrified. Yeah, right. uh -huh. It is they that are terrified, uh -huh. not they are terrified. terrified. Yes, so they in turn express terror. The way they know to defend themselves. Uh -huh. They terrified of the new time that's coming in. Uh -huh. So they got to now come out and become more vicious. Because the spiritual energy is going to be such that the people ain't going to take it no more. That's why they got your kids locked down in the education system. Uh -huh. It's an indoctrination system, not an education system. Now, just to bring it to a full circle, now that there's a lag taking place, and there's going to be a, a, a certain slowing down, first the speeding up, and then a slowing down, what's going to happen is that this 24 degrees is going to be temporary. It's going to happen in such a way that the, the, the spin of our earth is going to slow down to the point where day is going to be three days, night is going to be three days long. In other words, in the Bible they talked about the sun standing still in there. That was the 13,000 year cycle that happens. Where for three days there is no, there's no movement. And that's when oceans begin because the certain trajectory of the planet, the spin of the planet, kept certain oceans in certain locked places and certain, you know, like, okay, it went up on shore and came back down because the, the cyclic patterns, the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon and everything was in sync. It stayed in sync. Now, with everything slowing down, that particular agreement is no longer in place, which means floods, earthquakes, because imagine that the earth is spinning and on the earth itself, the earth spins upon a molten lava mantle. Oh, hold on one second. Let me get this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going too fast. This is good. This is good. Yeah, I got to stop it. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Okay. The earth itself at this time floats upon a mantle of molten rock. The centrifugal force created by the spin has set the present plates in place so that it's already found its spot. You ever spun a top and the, after, after it's spinning real fast it goes around first and then gets to a place where it spins real cool like it's like not even moving. There's a little wobble here and there because it's spinning so fast. Well, know that the specific speed at which the Earth is turning has set the plates of the planet, which is above water, in place according to that spin orientation. As the top slows down, shit starts to wobble. Anything that's on that will begin to start shifting, cracking up and breaking into a new ellipsis. Until such time as the earth begins to start spinning again, and in that second spin cycle, it rearranges the planet so that whoever survives now has to rebuild civilization. Oh, for it may not survive. Oh, yeah, hell, there's going to be a lot of people dead. A whole, a whole lot of water where there wasn't no water before. Yes. Beachfront property in Nevada. How close will be that? Because I know it's starting to experience erratic uh, uh, weather. Yes. With different tornadoes and storms yeah. going on. Um, so how close are we to this? We're very close because from what I understand, we finally see that there is a planetoid heading in our direction that's going to be affecting this change. Now this was the Nibiru energy that the ancient Sumerians had spoken about. But this is, there's also something that's really scaring the shit out of the astronomers. And that is the evidence of, of a... Of a, of a, of a um, I forgot the number that they have it as S187, I believe, or S1097. But that's a star system that is so bright that there is no night around it. And now, this, they, they, they don't know what's in it. They just see that around it is this huge blanket of, of light, all Coming colors and white. Hmm? Coming towards Earth. Coming towards Earth. Mm. And we don't, they, they have a... They don't know because they can't find the center of this thing. This thing is so huge, they don't know where the center is. And this was what was talked about in the Bible as being the God that nobody could see. And the God of the darkness, the one that came in the darkness. Our God is not a God of light. It is a God of the darkness. Around it, 
it will have such a burst of energy that in the Earth's field, all this solar system, all the galaxy will be white. Yes, and it will not be the sun's light, it will be like the six months of the aurora borealis or the six months of day that you yeah. get up in the thing, same yeah. thing is going to happen to us. Is that related to the El Nino, El Nino, the weather patterns that they're talking about now? Uh, uh, El Nino and El Nino. And, uh, and Nina. Well, yeah, most of it, yeah. All of these are, again, incidental symptoms of the whole change in consciousness. Um, yes, what right. you were saying, the six months of the mm -hmm. light, it's, I know that it's impossible, not that impossible, but they say that the Creator created the earth in seven days, and right. six days and he rested on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as that, because right. there are some places on this planet that mm -hmm. have six months of... Uh, of, of, of night, that six months of day, mm -hmm. some is 18 hours, mm -hmm. some is 24, uh, mm -hmm. you know, regular that's hours. The present, that's the present sun to earth agreement. Yes. Yeah, so but we don't know what happened before. So, so it's no way, yeah. you know, like they say, where he, he created in six days, he rested, no such thing as a day. Right. This planet, no, in the nine planets, right. solar system, and right. you know, yeah, you know. Well, that's just based on the fact that we, in human perception, yes, like I said, are doing time. Yeah. And essentially, doing time means that your perception is oriented to specific spatial relationships, yes. spatial sonations, that makes you believe that there's a night and a day. Yes. So you being caught in doing time, yeah. you know that you locked down in that perception. Yes. Again, yes. all right, it's going down, it's night now. No, it ain't. It's, not. it's essentially just the spin orientation.